Yeah, comes to talk. We got a lot to cover today, so I'm going to jump right into it. We will be on the air in just seconds. If you're new, subscribe. You'll love this channel, I promise you. Everyone who's already subbed will like the video. That helps a lot, too. Here we go. All right, guys, welcome to the program. It is Monday already. The weekend went by way too fast. Well, oh boy, we've got a lot to cover, and I'll tell you this, the eclipse is not part of it. There's like real important things. Like what? Let's, we're not even getting a total eclipse here in Florida. So, you know, be kind of like a cloud passing by. There's a lot to cover on the program today, and we're going to cover as much as uh, I possibly can because... Important things are happening. You know, I'm listening to the news. Biden's going to cancel the student loan debt. Man, if my wife and I could get our college education refunded to us, you know what that would be like? Oh, my goodness. We both have bachelor's degrees. And by the way, you know, how many of you, it's just so stupid. It's obvious what it is. The young people are losing. We're losing the young people, so let's cancel their debt. So they'll vote. You know, the thing about a college education, college educations, unless you do something like truly specialized, aren't really worth that much these days. The, the, the purpose, and again, unless you get some unique skills, but working, you know, what, what a college education says, I think, to employers, not that I'm an employer, but, you know, um, is that someone worked hard and they dedicated themselves to it. You know, it's a sense of accomplishment, of dedication, that they'll stick with something. And all these people that are going to get their student loans canceled, why not auto loans? Why not mortgages? You know, and I think about, and I know those of you, how many of you in college drop classes right before the drop date? You know, you take a class, and if you drop it before the drop date, it doesn't count against your grade point average. But if you, if you wait too long, you still have to pay for the class. Man, it, and I did that all the time. I did that so many times, especially with my foreign language classes. But if I got back all the money from my college education... It's not just the, how many credit hours is it for a bachelor's degree? 120, I think it's 120 credit hours, if I remember correctly. Plus, all the money on the classes that I dropped, that I had to pay for, because, you know, you want to drop, if you're not doing well in a class, you drop it before the drop date, so you, you know, you don't get an F, or a C, or a D, or a B. You know, um, if I got back my 120 credit hours, plus God knows how many credit hours I dropped. Might have been another 120. I don't know. Plus all the money in books. That, you know, because books are expensive in college. Expensive. In fact, I, ha I still have a lot of my books because they cost so much money. I couldn't get myself even still today to throw them away. And then my wife got back, she probably didn't drop as much as I did, but then my wife got back all of her college education cost. We could probably buy a condo or something for my daughter and maybe even pay cash for it. Because college education is not, although we both went to state university. She went to Florida State and I went to Florida Atlantic University, but it's still a lot of money. And, and these people that are getting their, uh, and, and, you know, I did the crazy thing. I paid my own way through school. It took me a long time, you know, because, you know, I was going to, to, to college while I was on the air and, and callers would call in and laugh at me that it took so long. Well, you know, when you're working a lot with crazy hours and you have a family, you know, sometimes it takes a while to get through school. But I did it. It was very exciting. But... <laughs> 
There was one liberal caller who didn't believe that I graduated college, and they offered to pay $250 to me if I showed them my degree. I offered to show it to them, and then I, they ghosted me. You know, But anyway, um, these, these people that are getting their uh, loans forgiven, right, they did everything the opposite. They took student loans. And, you know, student loans, these people that take student loans, going to college to them is, is a vacation. There's a minimum number of credit hours that they have to take to stay a full-time student, which I can't remember how many it is now. Was it nine hours or 12 hours to be a full-time student? So they get the student loans to cover. It takes them about six years to get a bachelor's degree. So, and they take the minimum credit hours. So they get the student loans to pay for their classes. They get student loans to pay for their books. They get student loans to pay for a dorm room. So I had to pay a mortgage when I was in college. But they got student loans to pay for uh, the dorm room. They get uh, student loans to pay for the meal plan at the school. And then there's all kinds of other student loans they can get for extra expenses, like buying computers and just going on vacation and such. And, and basically all they do is sit around, barely go to school, get high, have sex, and are on vacation all the time. Like these drunken floozies that came down here for spring break. You think they just, you know, it's ridiculous. Right? And, and, they, and they think they should get their loans canceled? That's insane. It's insane. And I'll tell you another thing it is. It's insulting. It's insulting. Not just to people that did it right and worked their way through school. Maybe paid back their student loans. You know? And when, you know, when I went, I went to, uh, when I went to the university and got my bachelor's degree, I paid for that. But I went to uh, a broadcasting school uh, when I was like, I don't know. 19, 18, however old I was. And I did take a loan for that. And it was $5,490 to go to broadcasting school, which is a big waste of money, guys. Sorry. I, I, you know, I know, I know, I know. Just get a job at, as a board op at a radio station. You'll learn everything, you know. But I, you know, and, but I had to pay that back. I wonder if I could get that back. I guess. It's probably been too long. And I paid it back. $5,490 to go to broadcasting school. I did take a loan for that, but I paid it back. I mean, this is insane what, what's going on here, you know? People are struggling to pay for food. Homelessness of working people is at an all-time high. Do you know how many people are working in offices that live in Escalades with their families, even here in Florida? It's true. It's, it's crazy. And they're going to cancel the debt for a bunch of losers that spent six years to get a four-year degree, getting high and having sex all the time and going on spring break vacations and everything else. They're going to get all that forgiven? Must be nice. People should be plenty pissed about that. Plenty pissed about it. And there's all kinds, you know, why not get your mortgages canceled? Why not get your car loans canceled? Or better yet, what about your credit card debt? Right, exactly. I'm sorry that you've got student loan debt. Hey, you don't have to take a loan to go to school. That's your own. I wonder how many members of Congress will get their debt canceled, like uh, AOC types. I don't know. It's just, it's, it's, the, it's just stupid. Stupid. You know, if you make college... A, uh, the equivalent of a public school, high school education by being completely free, not having to pay anything back, what good is, is the uh, degree? But you know what? I don't think that canceling, even if they canceled all student loan debt and even refunded everyone who paid for their own college education, it wouldn't be enough to help the Democrats. Oh yeah, I'd take the money. If they, if they refunded me my college education money and my, and my wife's, I'd take the money in a heartbeat, but I, I still wouldn't vote Democrat. Why, why would you? Why would you? 
All right, there's a lot to cover, and we're going to take our first break. When we get back, I'm going to get some big stuff with Trump. We're going to get into that and a whole bunch more. Our number's toll-free, 1-888-465-2631. You know, getting, if, if, I got, if my wife and I got refunded our college education expenses, our whole cost, that would be like winning the lottery. It would be a lot of money for two people. When you include everything... And my wife, she lived in the dorms and in a sorority house for a while. So that, that's a lot of money. She get that sorority house money back, that dorm money and everything. Oh, my goodness. Are you kidding? I wish. We'll be right back. Welcome, everyone. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I know these um, these people are sick. All right, we'll be back in 11 seconds, guys. Now, back to the Steve Kane Show with Brian Craig. Listen in the Palm Beaches on 95.9 FM. The Trish Post on 106.9 FM. Here is in Boca on 95.3 FM. Fort Lauderdale on 96.9 FM. And anywhere in the world at True Oldies FM. All right, we're back. I'm Brian. It's the Steve Kane Show, Florida's longest running radio show. You know, MyPillow.com just has massive sales going on with our promo code Kane. And check it. I just noticed, I didn't even know Mike Lindell had this. You know, there's a couple hundred products at MyPillow.com, but he has socks. White socks, um, black socks, gray socks. He has the socks that go all the way up the calf. He has the, the socks that you can't see when you're wearing shoes with shorts. I, I, and they're 40% off with our promo code Kane at checkout. K-N-E. I need some socks. So I'm going to tell my wife to order me some socks today. But the uh, sales are site-wide, and it's uh, free shipping on orders that are $75 or more. But the MyPillow mat- mattress toppers, th- this, is, this is the time to buy these. I mean, they're as much as 50% off. They come in every mattress size. 
I've been sleeping on the MyPillow mattress topper for years now, ever since Mike Lindell released them, and it will change the way you sleep. I only get about three to four hours of sleep a night, and you hear how well-rested I am. It's because even though I just get a little bit of sleep, that sleep I get is well-rested sleep. If you have a mattress that's lumpy, that's bumpy, that's old, that's worn, that's lopsided, get yourself a MyPillow mattress topper. As much as 50% off with our promo code Kane at checkout, K-A-N-E, and free shipping, right, on orders of $75 or more. Mattresses are expensive. The MyPillow mattress toppers are not, and you got a huge discount. So use our promo code Kane at checkout, K-A-N-E, and you can use our promo code Kane on all the specials at MyPillow.com, not just the ones I talk about. You can also order by phone, 1-800-716-4879. 1-800-716-4879, promo code Kane, K-A-N-E. All right, so um, the judge in this uh, skank, or what's her name, Stormy Daniels case is as corrupt as the day is long. I mean, he's as corrupt as Joe Biden. I was telling you guys on Friday that uh, this is that Bragg case, the Stormy Daniels hush money case, which is not even within the jurisdiction of Bragg because he's charging President Trump with federal uh, campaign finance laws, which are federal, and he's not federal, but he didn't break the law anyway. But the judge's daughter is a political consultant. I I talked all about this on Friday's show and on my shows over the weekend. Uh, The daughter was paid $10 million by the Biden campaign and the Adam Schiff campaign, $10 million, political consultant. And I, I bet you the top political consultants in America who win presidential elections, like Donna Brazil, big campaign manager, you think she got paid $10 million by a campaign? If she did, she's like a world-famous person. Who's this? Oh, she's the judge's daughter against Trump in the Stormy Daniels case. You know, this, this daughter is to the judge what Hunter is to Joe. Money mule, money launderer. This political consulting business with the judge's daughter is like Hunter on the board of directors of Burisma. We know this, right? I mean, it's, it's unbelievable. And, you know, when, and the judge ex- expanded the gag order. You can't talk about my daughter getting a $10 million. Well, I, hey, sorry, she shouldn't have took the money. And, and the media, you talk about the judge's adult daughter and Hunter, they act like they're little kids. And I want to read something to you. It's, it's a, uh, a statement signed by Stormy Daniels. And I tweeted this. Uh, Stormy Daniels wrote and signed a statement about this sex stuff with Trump. And I want to read it to you. It's dated January 30th, 2018. So it's over six years ago. It says, official statement of Stormy Daniels, dated January 30th, 2018. To whom it may concern. Over the past few weeks, I have been asked countless times to comment on reports of an alleged sexual relationship I had with Donald Trump many, many, many years ago. The fact of the matter is that each party to this alleged affair denied its existence in 2006, 2011, 2016, 2017, and now again in 2018. I am not denying this affair because I was paid hush money, as has been reported in overseas-owned tabloids. I am denying this affair because it never happened. I will have no further comment on this matter, Please feel free to check me out on Instagram at the Stormy Daniels. Signed, Stormy Daniels. So Stormy Daniels wrote and signed a statement saying she did not have sex with Donald Trump. She wrote and signed it. That's it. It's over, right? You would think. But no. The meat, what is that, Russian disinformation? I mean, this is insanity. So, why is this still a story? Why is this sworn little statement of hers 
that she wrote and signed, why has this been disappeared? It really goes to show you how fake the news is. It really is. Now, the judge in this case is threatening to put uh, Trump in jail for violating the gag order. And President Trump has spoken out. This is from Reuters. Donald Trump said it would be, quote, my great honor to go to jail for violating a gag order imposed by the judge who will hear his upcoming trial on charges stemming from a hush money payment to a porn star who said she didn't have sex with that president, Donald Trump, and signed it. Trump on True Social posted this. If this partisan hack, he's talking about the judge, if this partisan hack wants to put me in the clink for speaking the open and obvious truth, I will gladly become a modern-day Nelson Mandela. It will be my great honor, Trump posted on Saturday on his Truth Social platform. Trump was referring to Juan Merchant, the judge who will preside over his trial in New York State Court and Manhattan, on criminal charges of covering up a $130,000 payment before the uh, 2016 election to porn star uh, Stormy Daniels to buy her silence about an alleged sexual encounter. She signed a statement saying it didn't happen. Trial begins April 15th. Today's the 8th. Um, the uh, The Republican, that's Trump, who is challenging Joe Biden has pleaded not guilty to 34 counts of falsifying business records and denies an encounter with Daniels. Well, Daniels denies it too. They both said it didn't happen. If both of them say it, first off, it's not illegal if they did have sex. It's not a crime. Okay? But both parties say, I did not have sex with that porn star, Stormy Daniels. Stormy Daniels said, I did not have sex with that man, Donald Trump. Trump has pled not guilty to 34 counts of falsifying business records and denies an encounter with Daniels, whose real name is Stephanie Clifford. The judge on April 1st expanded an existing gag order that barred Trump from commenting about witnesses and court staff to make it clear. It also applies to family members. Don't talk about my daughter getting $10 million from Adam Schiff and Biden. People might think I'm a crooked judge. The looming hush money trial is one of four criminal cases Trump is confronting. Here's a guy that didn't get more than maybe a speeding ticket or uh, a traffic violation for a rolling stop at a stop sign. Then uh, all of a sudden he's president and they got him up on how many charges? How many cases? So Stormy Daniels said it didn't happen. Oh, but we don't want to believe her because we got a narrative we're trying to push. All right. If you're on hold, stand by. Um, we'll take our break. Our number, one 465 2631 My name is Brian Craig. You're listening to The Steve Kane Show, Florida's longest-running radio show on the radio since 1977. Back after this. I mean, he, he, she said it didn't happen. So, what's the pro? Why is it continuing? Most of them radicalized right up to the right. And we have to start doing something about them. There is no travel ban on them. There is no...
over it because we were distracted by another extreme. You know, towards the border, like it, people, before they even made it in this country, is white men and realize the biggest terror threat to the border. Oh my goodness, guys. Interesting. Welcome, everyone. If you're new, make sure you subscribe. What, what's the name of the, the lady ex-mayor of Chicago? <clears throat> Lightfoot. Uh, I just remembered. Never mind. Thank you, Charmaine. Now, back to the Steve Kane Show with Brian Craig, celebrating 47 years on the air. All righty, welcome back, one and all. I'm Brian. It's the Steve Kane Show, Florida's longest-running radio show. Calls on hold, stand by. Um, I want to share something, play something, and then have a question for you. You know, Don Lamont got married over the weekend. He married his boyfriend. Now his boyfriend is now his husband. Um... And I want to share this clip. A lot of people are playing this today. This is Don Lamont back on CNN talking to Fredo and talking about the, the greatest threat facing America. Have you heard this? Listen. So we have to stop demonizing people and realize the biggest terror threat in this country is white men, most of them radicalized. Do you hear that? The, the biggest threat to this country are white men. That's what Don Lamont said. Tree is white men, most of them radicalized right up to the right. And we have to start doing something about them. There is no travel ban on them. There is no ban on, you know, they have the Muslim ban. There is no white guy ban. So what do we do about that? So, and, and, and first of all, let me just say this. Maurice Stollard is... Now, whatever. Let me just say this. You're a racist and a bigot. So, uh, what are we going to do about white men? 
Well, in Don Lamont's case, he married a white man. His husband is white. Biggest threat. Biggest threat in the country are white men. So he married a white man, but he's not alone. And this is the, I want to point something out to you and then ask you a question. Don Lamont is not the only non-white liberal who's um, with a white guy. Kamala Harris, married to a white man. AOC, I don't know if she made that dorky geek or husband yet, but they're, they were engaged. White guy. Lori Lightfoot, is, is, is she married to her girlfriend? Are they want White. Her partner, wife, is white. Um, Ilhan Omar, her husband, is white. And uh, Biden's um, African-American Supreme Court pick, Katanji, her husband's a white guy, too. Um, what's that about? Now, I have, I have noticed over the years that black men and women who typically are conservative, ha- you know, have white spouses, conservative, right? Um, Clarence Thomas and others. But I didn't really think about this till I, I saw someone, I mean, I knew this, but I hadn't put it all together. And I saw some people over the weekend pointing this out with Don Lamont. Why are all of these racist minorities married to white men? What's that about? Does anyone know? Yeah, Candace Owens married to a white guy, but she's not a liberal. Why are these racist Democrats married to white men? I'm I'm curious. Any thoughts on that? I don't know. Especially Don Lamont, who thinks we're terrorists and white guys are the biggest threat to the country and wants to have some kind of ban on our movements. And did you see what Don Lamont did after his wedding? It was so weird. Do you know who the two most high-profile celebrity guests were? Alec Baldwin and Matt Lauer. So, I mean, think about that. Alec Baldwin killed a woman and shot a director. Would you have an honored guest at your wedding that killed a woman and shot another person? Not me. Not me. And Matt Lauer, well, Alec Baldwin killed a woman. That's not even up for debate, right? That's not even, he did, he killed a woman. I think he even admits to it. Just talks about his liability. Matt Lauer was accused of doing the worst things you can do to a woman short of killing her. Why is Don Lamont bringing these scum buckets to his wedding? Are these the only celebrities who would come to the wedding? You're on the air. What's your name? Where are you calling from? This is Mike from Louisiana. Hey, Mike. You know, you're right to talk about these liberals that are married, I mean, uh, to white people. I mean, uh, or, or dating the white people. I mean, Lori Lightfoot's dating a white woman, too. I think she's married. I think Lightfoot married her. I don't know. Yeah, but again, these people are hypocrites, but they don't care that they, they look like hypocrites because they're... Well, what, no, I don't know about hypocrites. Why? Listen, all of these uh, Democrats I mentioned, they're all racist. Except Katanji, I don't know too much about her. So we'll take her out of the mix. But all the others are racist. So why, why are these racist Democrats married to white guys? They hate white people. I really don't know. But the other thing I want to address is this, this statement that you have on your, on your thing about, it, I'll go to jail. He knows he's not going to go to jail because it's not, he knows how to push these people's buttons, in other words, Trump does. I don't know. I I don't know. I um, this this judge in the Stormy Daniels case, he's getting ticked off. And I I think President Trump wants them to put him in the clink. I think he wants this judge to order him arrested. I really do. Well, that may be the case, but the the Secret Service isn't going to allow that. What make? How do you know? What are you in the Secret Service? How do you know? 
Well, uh, apparently, that's the, that, that. The Secret Service is run by Biden. Secret Service is run by Biden. Is it? Is it the? Is it the Secret Service under the Department of Homeland? It used to be under the Treasury Department, but I think they moved it to Homeland Security years ago. So that means Mayorkas would is is in charge of the Secret Service. Well, yeah. Well, yes. But if if left to their bases, they don't they don't allow things like this to happen to presidents. The president. You can he can be protected in the jail cell with them there. They could go with him. They can go with him, but it's going to be incredibly hard for them to do it because, you know, they're going to want to be segregated, and they're not going to, the people aren't going to want to segregate mm -hmm. from general population, right? When you go to jail for violating a gag order, you're not, you're not going to stand, you know, they're not putting you in with the bad guys, are you? I mean, they, they put you kind of in a safe place, right? That's like where reporters and stuff go. Well, yeah, but the thing is, is they will, they want him in a, a bad place. They want him in a place. Yeah. All right. I, I, pre I appreciate the call. I appreciate the call. All right. You know, so I, 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 now what do you guys think? Does, does Donald Trump want to get arrested by this? Or I, I should say, does he want the judge to order him being arrested? Because there's no doubt about it. President Trump is violating the gag order of this corrupt judge. You know, just if, even if the daughter's getting the $10 million from Biden and Adam Schiff legitimately, which is highly unlikely, uh, he should recuse himself for a conflict of interest. Right? Full disclosure. My daughter got paid $10 million by Joe Biden and Adam Schiff, so I got to recuse myself. The very fact that he doesn't recuse himself shows it's crooked. You know, you got to wonder... You got to wonder, what, what, what's, what does Donald Trump want? I, I think he wants the judge to order him to be arrested. And you know what? He's not going to slow down violating this gag order, nor should he. You know, the media will not cover this. In fact, I've heard them talk about it, uh, Trump violating the gag order, and they don't get into the details that Biden and Adam Schiff paid the judge's daughter $10 million. Oh, she's a... Pol they, they describe her... Oh, she's a Democrat political consultant. Oh, okay. That's oh, okay. No, no problem here. They don't point out the ten million dollars from Biden's campaign and from Adam Schiff's campaign. How is that not corrupt? Of course, it's corrupt. You know, there there have been times. I haven't heard this happen in many many years, but there have been instances where justices of the Supreme Court have recused themselves from cases before the Supreme Court. Because they had a, pr a prior conflict. Remember, have you remember? I haven't heard one of these in years because you know it's a different world now. There are no conflicts. You just got to hate on Trump, I guess. But this is this is not unusual for a judge to recuse themselves. It happens all the time for all kinds of reasons, but not in this case. Hmm. All right, we'll take our uh, last break of the first hour of the week. And, you know, listen, the weekend is over, over a little too fast, if you ask me. But uh, if you're a little more active over the weekend like I am, and you woke up this Monday morning in pain, go see Dr. Appleton today. Appointments are not necessary and walk-ins are welcome. And he will rid you of your pain like he's done to me five different times. His laser away pain treatment works, guys. There are no injections, no downtime, no drugs, no surgery. And the laser wave pain treatment is 100% painless. And it works on so many different types of pain, as you've heard me talk about many times. Remember, appointments are not necessary. Walk-ins are welcome. So go in there and say bye-bye to your pain. His number is 954-973-0710. 954-973-0710. Nine five four nine seven three zero seven ten and online appletoncairo.com. We'll be right back. The cold hard truth. Deliver morning six to nine right here on the Steve Kane Show.
Welcome, everyone. Good morning. Welcome to the program. Let me uh, know what you guys think, yes or no. Does Trump want the judge to order uh, him arrested, this corrupt judge? I, I think he does, to point out how corrupt the judge is. Yeah. Yes, no, yes. She works for the money company that got, oh my goodness. Why do you think the company got the money? Oh my gosh. Don't be stupid, Axe J. That's called money laundering, guys. Money laundering. <laughs> Didn't get paid directly. Yeah, Walter White, you know, he got paid by the car wash. <laughs> oh, that money to Hunter, that was that was for his Burisma work. <clears throat> Liberals are just assholes. <clears throat> Did you guys enjoy my vlog over the weekend at the Boynton Inlet on my other YouTube channel, my vlogging channel? I hope you did. My cruise vl uh, vlogs are going to be on that channel. <clears throat> yeah, I took the uh, MAGA scooter to make that video. <clears throat> Thank you, Jack. Yeah, make sure you subscribe to that channel, guys. My cruise videos are going to be on that uh, Main Street Moments channel. <clears throat> All right, call us on hold. Stand by. I'm Brian Craig. It's the Steve Kane Show. Oh, man, so much on the table already. I think President Trump wants this corrupt judge to order his arrest for the violation of the gag order. I really do to bring attention to how corrupt he is. All right, what say you? You're on the air. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Jeff from Maine, Brian. Hey, Jeff, what's up? I've been real busy with the Marine Corps League and the American Legion. I just haven't had time. I'm so glad I came on this morning because I think Trump wants to dare them to try to arrest him. I don't think they'll do it. I think it would set the wrong precedence, precedence in that, like you said, they'll never prosecute Obama because he's black and it would create a fiasco. Well, how much more so would it be for them to arrest Trump? I know they're going to try. I just don't believe it's going to actually happen and that Trump's daring him to. Yeah. You know, there's no doubt about it. The judge, in the very least, if the daughter got the money legitimately, it's still a conflict. He should recuse himself. The fact that he has not recused himself makes it look like a payoff. Yes, it does. Exactly, Brian. You know, can you imagine if Trump or any of his lawyers did anything that these Democrats are doing, they would be arrested so fast. And that'd be the right thing to do. You know, and that'd be the right thing to do. If, yeah. Exactly, Brian. We are not above the law. We want to follow the law as Republicans. That's what conservatism is, is our God-given rights guaranteed in the Constitution and to follow the rules and laws of the land. Mm-hmm. That's right. So that's what Megger is. We are not these flipping out crazy people. They're the crazy people. Mm -hmm. How the media 
spins everything is just absurd. You know, that's why we come to places like this and RSBN, Real America's Voice, because you get the truth unfiltered. And that's what makes this show so great, Brian. No, thank you. Uh, I, I'm very thankful for the people I've met in this chat room. It's like, even though I haven't met you in person, I know you. We, we're of the same faith and belief, and we believe in our country, and um, we want to save our country. Mm -hmm. And and because of what we believe, they think we're crazy. And it, it's just absurd to think since the 80s, and I know you'll agree with me, with everybody in the chat room since the 80s, what this country has become. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, we're, we're, we're the free, this is not a free country. It's an illusion. We're li yeah, we're living in a prison. Close them all, and everything they have accused Trump of is what they're guilty of. And I learned that from you. Sal Lewinsky's rules for radicals are, is to accuse your enemy of what you're guilty of. Correct. They've been doing ever since June 2015. Mm-hmm. That's right. All right, Jeff Romain, good to hear from you. I appreciate the call. All right, thank you. You know, Zelensky, he said over the weekend, Zelensky said that if Congress, our Congress, doesn't send more money to Ukraine, that Russia will win the war. So what? Who cares? Who cares? Right? What does that matter? Do you care? What, what difference will it make if Russia wins this war with Ukraine. Exactly. It doesn't matter at all. Nothing would change for us. I mean, it's, it's very difficult, I think, for Americans to be concerned about the sovereignty of the Ukrainian border when the Democrats have erased completely our southern border. That's it. It's just not going to happen. And I, I heard on the news at the top of the hour, I, I guess it's today, is the six-month anniversary since those that terrorist horde attacked Israel. That means six months. There are women, Israeli women in Gaza, who have been getting raped nonstop for six months. And I'm hearing all this crap over the weekend that Israel's being too tough, that Israel needs to back off. Remember that, that monster in Cleveland that was holding those women uh, hostage in his basement for years? That's what's going on in Gaza to these Israeli women. But somehow, the rapists are the victims here? You know... The Obama has spread so much anti-Semitism in, in, in this country by bringing over these radical Muslims for eight years. You see them all the time. I got one I'm going to play for you in just a bit. But some conservatives, it's even rubbed off on them. I was talking the other day about Candace Owens. Candace Owens, and there's some other uh, conservatives like her who are opposed to you, the United States helping Israel. You know, a lot of these millennials, even conservative millennials, have been brainwashed through the Obama years to not support Israel. And, you know, when, when you, it's six months going by, what happened to Lake and Riley happened how many times over at that music festival? It, it's endless. And for the life of me, I don't understand a single person in this country having any sympathy for these terrorist monsters that have spent six months endlessly, without mercy, raping the Israeli women that they've kidnapped. The ones they didn't rape and then murder. And we're never going to get the truth about this whole thing, but I'm here to tell you this. That music festival, remember the, when, when it first happened, we saw video of the music festival before the, the terrorists came in. Remember the DJ was jamming and all that? It was a, there was a, um, a, a video that was, I guess it was the DJ cam, because you could see the DJ and then the place. 
and it was an all-night rave. They, they got those terrorists to do this. They got them hopped up on, well, first off, they trained them on how to do an aerial assault in these ultralight aircraft. And then they got them drugged up. And they told them, you know, you, you saw the people dancing. Those are the cool kids. You can go there and get the, the, as many of these hot girls at the music festival as you want, and they're yours. And they did it. They targeted the music festival to tempt the guys, the terrorist monster men, with kidnapping the hot girls from the music festival. It was very specifically targeting women. So all these hags on The View and these so-called defenders of female liberty like Joy Reid and Rachel Maddow and all these liars on MSNBC and all these self-important people on CNN that have sympathy for, for Gaza, they're not the victims. The Israelis are the victims. It's enough. And, and, and it's getting worse every day. In fact, there was a story over the weekend that Jill Biden's been putting pressure on Joe to help Gaza. With what? What do they need help with? How about turn over all the hostages? How about that? It's bad enough we're f that the United States, that Joe Biden is funding Hamas by funding Iran. They, they get zero aid. They deserve zero aid. You don't give aid to rapists and murderers of women unless you're Joe Biden and a modern-day Democrat. You know, there's a poll... Let me see if I can find this. It's of Muslims in the UK. Let me see if I can find this before the top of the hour. I, I did tweet this. I don't know if I can find it in time. But there was a poll of Muslims in the UK, and the majority by far of Muslims in the UK uh, don't believe that the uh, Hamas terrorists raped the women. Yeah. Okay, listen to this. Now, this is, I mean, I'd like to have a, a, a poll of American Muslims, but we don't. So we have one out of Muslims in the UK. Listen to this. Three out of four British Muslims don't believe Hamas committed rape and murder during the October 7th barbaric terrorist attacks on Israel. How can they not believe it? We saw it. There's video of it. The... The hostages that they let go, why are they coming back pregnant? Three out of four, and, and think about it. You know, the, and the rest, that, that, so three out of four don't believe it happened. So the one out of four probably think it was justified. In fact, in this country, you listen to the media and the Democrats, you would, they're, what they're telling you is, what these Hamas monsters did was justified because of, well, their hatred of Jews. But what I'm hearing from the entire left is a justification. It's been six months. It's sick. It's twisted. You literally have Democrats supporting rapists. The two worst crimes that can be committed are rape and murder. And they're supporting, and this is in the aftermath of the Me Too movement. Where is Ronan Farrow? Does he only care about women that were raped because they went, uh, by Harvey Weinstein? If, if these were Hollywood directors that came in on ultralights and did the raping, would then the left care? You know, all these kids from Nickelodeon that are talking about Dan Schneider and these other guys that harass them and Drake Bell, I feel bad for them. But what happened to Drake Bell is nothing compared to what, what's going on right now as we speak to these Israeli women that are being held in sex dungeons in Gaza. All right, we're going to take our break for the top of the hour. You're listening to The Steve Cain Show. My name is Brian Craig. Our number is toll-free, 1-888-465-2631. We'll take our break for the top of the hour and be right back. USF.
our protest on the International Day of Quds? Why are they so anti-America? Why don't we just focus more on Israel and not talk so much about America? Gaza has shown the entire world why these protests are so anti-America. Because it's the United States government that provides the funds for all of the atrocities that we just heard about. And this is why Imam Khomeini, who declared the International Day of Quds, this is why he would say to pour all of your cha all of your chants and all of your shouts upon the head of America. Malcolm X said, and I quote, we live in one of the rottenest countries that has, ever, that has ever existed on this earth. It's not Genocide Joe that has to go. It's the entire system that has to go. Any system that would allow such atrocities and such... If you're on hold, hang in there. We'll be back shortly, guys. Six months Sunday, so that means yesterday. All right, call is on hold, standby. I'm Brian. Hour number two has begun. You're listening to The Steve Kane Show, Florida's longest-running radio show. Oh, man, I brought up a lot in the first hour, so let's just go to the phones before I bring up something new. You're on the air. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Hey, Brian. Hey, Ben. Um, yeah, so I know uh, what you said about him. Biden, uh, you know, what he's doing in Israel, pretty much supporting Hamas, it, it's way sicker than that. Uh, what he's doing 
the, his entire foreign policy and, and domestic policy as well is based on him winning the next election. He's only stopping it so he can win Michigan. Mm -hmm. The high Muslim population. So, so he's letting women be raped so he can win Michigan because terrorist supporters in Michigan might vote for him? Is that what you're saying? Yeah. I mean, oh, that's awesome. Man, what a great guy. Jerk. Look what he did with, during the midterms. With the, with the How many women... I, I, want, I want to throw this out. I, I think about this. Between Gaza and the sex trafficking at the southern border... How many women and girls have been raped because of Joe Biden? I mean, could you put a number on it? A million? A hundred thousand? I don't know, but it's happening worldwide. Yeah, and you know what? I mean, he's a sicko. If you read Ashley Biden's diary... Well, we don't want to go, don't, don't want to go into... We know he's a sicko. We know he's a sicko. These things don't... He doesn't care. And it's just like when he drained the Strategic Petroleum Reserve... During the midterms, he doesn't care about putting national security or world security at risk, so he can win elections. Mm -hmm. So it's really no. I mean, this is the this is the deepest level. Of the see, see these these um, women that are being raped at the southern border. I don't think he cares because I think in his mind they're beneath him. They're like peasants. So you know who cares about the 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 help? They're so far away from. It's, I, I don't know. If you, there was an episode of Law and Order where he was basically describing like a scene where like a guy is on top of a Ferris wheel and he's just pointing down to the people below, and it's so dehumanizing because they're so far away. It doesn't matter. And it's mm -hmm. the same with Biden. Like these people, they're so far away. They're so abstract. He's only he, he goes back to Delaware every weekend for four day weekends. He he is so removed from the actual chaos that he sows that um, I don't think he is something that affects him. It's, mm. you know, ants. We're all ants to him. You know, when, when President Trump became president and he, sh he shut down sex trafficking at the southern border, he shut down um, Backpage, which is how globally uh, uh, prostitution and sex trafficking, he, he shut down all the sex trafficking hooker websites around the world with, with federal raids, you know, and Joe Biden brought all that back. And I kind of think de uh, uh, Democrats get kind of turned on by it. I, I just don't think they care. At, you know, look, after all the big deals they made, for I understand for good reason about Harvey Weinstein, okay? But you look at what's going on now. Yesterday was the six-month anniversary of the uh, terrorist attack on Israel. There are women that have spent the last six months being raped nonstop, daily, I mean, that's, yeah. that's, I mean, can you, I mean, I don't even like to think about it. No, I mean, not only that, he's, he's, he's allowing for Hamas to regroup, recouple so they can expand their reign of terror and continue to do, you know, like, we, there's an opportunity to wipe out one of the biggest terror organizations, uh, you know, Trump already was done, but he has an opportunity to wipe these people out and he's, mm. he's preventing it. He's, yeah. Specifically stopping their invasion of Rafa and the southern parts of Gaza. Well, it's it, and it's not it's not just the money, uh, the billions of dollars that Biden gives Iran that supports this terrorism. It's him driving up the price of oil, which gives Iran even more money to fund this terrorism. Oh, I know, I know, and, and he, it, the same thing happened with Russia. I mean, can you believe this guy was on the head of what was it? The, uh, the Committee for Foreign Affairs in the mm -hmm. for like 30 years. Yeah. He was, the, the reason Obama tapped on him, one of the many reasons, was because of his expertise, quote unquote, in, in foreign affairs. Yeah. Now, this guy's foreign affairs policy is a complete disaster. And I'll tell you, um, there's, um, there's, you know, Candace Owens is getting ready to make her debut back in media, and she's very much against U.S. involvement uh, supporting Israel of any kind. I'd like somebody to ask Candace Owens about these women who have been getting raped nonstop for six months. She's gone off the rails lately. I don't know what her issue she is. She hates Jews. She hates Jews. Uh, ben Shapiro and Candace Owens are supposed to debate today at, I think, 5 p.m. because they've been talking trash to each other nonstop. Mm -hmm. And so there's, there's going to be a debate today, so it could be interesting. I don't think it's, it, it's, I don't know if it's going to happen today or not, but I know Candace Owens hates Jews. Probably. I mean, she's, she's kind of, it's, you know, she's one of those people who doesn't outright say it, 
but she dances around all these issues, and she just, you know, that, like, anti-Semites would say, and she talks about it, and then she just says, well, I'm just asking questions. Yeah, I'm just asking questions. I, I don't hear any questions asking about when are they going to turn the hostages over? When are they going to stop these atrocities? I mean, th 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 there is only, the, this, Israel is the only, the reason the anti-Semitism towards Israel is so apparent is because the, this is the only country that we hold different standards to when conducting war. We don't hold any different standards to anyone else. Like, if any other country had what Hamas did to Israel do to them. Listen, the Democrat Party has been taken over by Muslims. Let's face it. They've been taken over by Muslims. That's, that's, a, that's the way it is. Remember the anti-Semitism marches through the street after October 7th? Like, on the university campuses in New York, 40% of Democrats were polled and they said they support Hamas. 50%. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's almost half their base support a terror organization. Democrats are like the labor in England. They're the party of anti-Semitism. And it, 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 it's, it's so... Now, now I don't... With, with Candace Owens, I don't know exactly what happened. I mean, obviously, she doesn't like Ben Shapiro, which I get. I don't like Ben Shapiro either. I agree with him on everything he... On his, all of his positions on Israel, though. So I don't know if she's let her hatred of Ben Shapiro translate to all Jews... But she sounds like an anti-Semite when she talks about uh, Israel. Yeah, she does. She does. And, you know, their beef started. She was working at Daily Wire, and then they started, like, publicly feuding. And then he didn't renew her contract. And then they're like, oh. And so it's just kind of been that way. Yeah. All right. Well, we'll see. I appreciate the call, man. Take, take care. You're on the air. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Good morning, conservative. Doug. Hey, Doug. I, I was just going to say exactly what you said. You know, I think that uh, uh, Candace Owens got contaminated by Ben Shapiro, and now she uh, hates everybody that's Jewish, uh, unfortunately. Anyway, the other thing I want to say is the uh, student loans. Wait a minute. Uh, what am I missing? The, the court said that he can't use all that money because Congress is the one that's supposed to spend the money. And yet here he now, this is different. They got some spe They don't Listen, listen. If you haven't noticed, these people don't care about laws. Constitution, Supreme Court, they just make it up as they go along. Make up. Talk about making up. All, all you hear now from uh, MSNBC and CNN and all these liberals I know is that, oh, everything's so wonderful under Biden. It, it, yeah. It's great, and the uh, inflation's coming down. Oh, yeah. Coming down. The border is being closed up. Mm -hmm. yeah, like, like, uh, uh, yeah, right. You're not, believe your, you're not supposed to believe your eyes. You're supposed to just believe what they say. Mm -hmm. but, uh, I don't know how anybody... Yeah. This guy. And, and I'll tell you, I just, I'll tell you this, you know, just, uh, by, by the way, uh, thanks for the call. I, I mean, I, so obviously I support Israel, which I think is, you know, clear. But even if, is, even if Israel was not the victim and was like deserving of a sneak attack, I'm not saying they were, but if they were, how does that justify kidnapping civilian women and doing what it is they're doing to them? How does it justify that? Even if it was a legitimate thing, how does it justify that? You know, the reason I bring this up is, is only because uh, I keep hearing in the news that Israel needs to cool off a little bit. That uh, we got to give aid to Gaza. And then, and then we hit the six-month point, and I'm just thinking, you know, and you guys out there, you've got daughters, you've got grandchildren, You've got wives, you've got sisters. My God, you know? I mean, it, it, it makes me physically ill to, to, to know that this is going on and we have millions of monsters in this country. Let, let me, um, well, let's take our break and then I'll share something with you. We'll be right back. Don't sit on the sidelines. Get on the action. Call the Steve Kate Show live on air now.
Oh. Is this you, Ian? Okay, hold on. All right, callers on hold, stand by. I'm Brian Craig. It's the Steve Kane Show, Florida's longest running radio show. You know, we're, we're, we're what, 19 days away from our fifth annual cruise, which is absolutely amazing. And I'm really looking forward to it. Now, obviously, we're not going to be here live on the radio that week, but... Uh, I will be live streaming on my YouTube channel from the crew. I've never done that before. Um, I will be live streaming from the ship on my YouTube channel, guys. Brian Craig Show on YouTube. So if you don't follow me there, do. Uh, now, our cruise has been booked for weeks and weeks and, 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 and months. But there's a lot of things to do uh, as the countdown to sailing uh, approaches and on the line our travel agent Ian from Cruise and Travel Depot. Uh, how you doing, Ian? Good morning. Nice. Nineteen days. Whatever. Yeah. So I can take the light cheap martinis already. Yeah, it sounds like you've been you started already, but you know there's a lot of things people got to do that are on this trip. And we found out something the other day, which was really scary. Is you know y you can do your check in now, which I I checked in like weeks ago. I did all that boarding stuff weeks ago on the app, but Steve Kane and his wife they they had the birth dates wrong, and Steve would have been denied boarding on his own cruise. Yeah, it's kind of scary how that happened, which <laughs> emphasizes the importance of checking in early, making sure all the data is correct, so we can still correct it. <clears throat> yeah, absolutely. And you know, I asked Ian to call in today because. The the excursions that we are doing on this cruise are, by, out of all the other cruises we've done, these are far and above insanely superior to all of them. And it's it's very difficult because each cruise we have to top the excursions before. And we have excursions in every port. But we actually chartered uh, a catamaran, which is a beautiful sailboat. Can you tell people about the uh, sunset sailing we're going to do in our private catamaran sailboat. Absolutely. So in Curacao, like you said, we have a chartered, completely privatized sunset cruise around the island. We're going to sit on the catamaran and watch the sunset over the Caribbean Sea with drinks, of course. Included. We actually have some space left. Yeah. Uh, we're going to take a private motor coach to, um, to the little berth and pier. And it's going to be a great time around the island. Yeah, so if you've not signed up for the uh, shore excursions, call in at Cruise and Travel Depot and do it today, in particular on uh, this, this sunset cruise that we're doing on the, on the privately chartered catamaran sailboat. You know, we did a catamaran on the last cruise, and it was a hit. This one is even superior, as crazy as it is, to that one. I mean, the only thing we're missing is Christopher Cross uh, singing and playing live music, sailing while we're doing it. Short, maybe we'll get him on the next one, Ian. I don't know. But I want to give... Yeah, now, is there anything else people need to know about, though, that are... Because it's sold out. There's no room. But people that are already booked, is there anything else people need to know about? Well, they need to review their 
documentation. They should have received their documentation, including their luggage tax, which they can print and fold and staple. You know, arrive with all your passports in order, and um, I'll see everybody on board. Now, any questions, give me a shout while we still have time to correct any anomalies. Yeah, and they do happen, okay, because I'm not kidding. Uh, it was uh, Steve's wife's birth date was in wrong, and they would have gotten to the port, and they would not have been able to board the ship. It would have been a, a mess, you know. So I'm going to give you Ian's number at Cruise and Travel Depot. Uh, everyone who's booked, check in with Ian. Make sure everything's, uh, you know, good to go for you. And if you've not done it yet, sign up for the excursions. And by the way, I will be on all the excursions with you. Um, I basically become a, uh, I don't know, a cruise director on these things, which is fun. I enjoy it. Here's Ian's number, 561 244 5779. 561-244-5779. All right, Ian, we'll talk soon. Sounds good. Take care. All right, take care. All right, back to our phones. You're on the air. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Hey, Brian. It's Keith Evans. How are you? Hey, Keith. What's going on? Well, listen, my son got a pass from the Army in Israel to come see me, and this is where our country had to come down to. I w we were not allowed to tell anyone he was from Israel or Israeli soldier. He was from Czechoslovakia, he was from Italy, you name it, that's where he was from when he met people here. It, this is where our country has come to. That it was so dangerous for him to say that he was an Israeli soldier. You know, and it's, it's just sad, it's, it's heartbreaking. But I can tell everybody out there, because my son was in deep in Gaza, okay? That you talk about all these so-called innocent civilians. Well, every all these innocent civilians had plenty of guns and rock propelled grenades and you name it. And under baby cribs, in the baby drawers, every just about every house you find some. Just about every house you find something with weapons. That whole Gaza Strip is nothing but one big uh, terrorist camp that probably has more weapons than some armies in the world. And it's unbelievable. And it's you know what's so heartbreaking? It's so heartbreaking that. These de I call them Democrats, okay, because I can't call them Democrats. I don't know what they are anymore, but it's sick. 30 or 31 Americans were killed by Hamas. Six are still held captive. They don't even, okay, even if I said, oh, they're not worried about Israelis, they don't even talk about the Americans that were killed or the American hostages that are there. And they're all in Rafa, okay, and unless they go in, it's, Hamas is going to stay, and that's it. By the way, they shot rockets today, yeah. and Israel had to shoot them. And by, by the way, for people that are tuning in, this is Keith Nevins. You guys remember Keith Nevins, uh, him and his dad, Barry uh, Nevins, had Barry's vitamins for many years in Boca. Um, you know, uh, Keith, this is, um, it's got awful, you know, this barbaric attack over there, but I, uh, which is sick in its own right. But what Obama has done in this country, we have anti-Semitism at levels that they had in Germany back in 33, 36. I've never seen anything like this. We, we had pretty much rid our society of mainstream anti-Semitism, but now it's, it's, it's like Germany in the 30s in this country. Why did you see Rutgers, what happened at Rutgers? Yes, yeah. This is all, see, so, so I don't understand, Brian. Like, I think it hurts me more than anything is still is, and, I, and, I, and I can say this clearly, and I really don't care what anyone thinks, but if these liberal Jews, right, okay, are going to vote for Democrats, they're going to vote for their grandkids, their, well, their children, their grandkids are going to have no future. They're all going to be in danger. I don't know what they don't understand. Your kids and your grandkids are going to live in America that is going to be dangerous for them. Look what's going on now. It's unbelievable. Yet, but some of these liberals are still going to do it. I, I don't get it. I, I say to everybody, so if the Democrats win, can your kids go to the park? What's gonna, will your kids ever take their bicycle to the park again? No. Are the streets going to get better? No. It's going to be a disaster. It's going to be an absolute disaster. We're going to live in a world that our I can't even, I, I just, I can't, I can't even imagine. Listen, I know, I know a guy who's a veteran of the Israeli army and he doesn't tell anybody because he's, he's afraid for his family's safety. He lives here and. I couldn't tell, couldn't tell anybody, couldn't tell anybody who's really coming. Only a couple of my really good, good friends knew. Okay. Now it, 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 it was, it, he could not, it was too, too dangerous for him. That's, that's 
because all he had to do was tell anybody that he didn't know that he couldn't. And uh, you know, you know what it's like. You know, in this in this country during Vietnam. You know, the liberals would spit and attack U.S. soldiers, kill a kid today and all this crap. It's worse for the Israeli Defense Force soldiers who are being portrayed as Nazis, like they're an Auschwitz uh, uh, guard or something. I, I, this, this is a major shift in this country, and it's all Obama. Brian, my daughter's a lawyer in the Israeli army, okay? She's a lawyer, okay? Let me tell you something. The standards that the Israeli army has compared to other armies in the world, is so much above. It, it, nobody is scrutinized like the Israeli army, okay? Nothing can be perfect. Things happen, mistakes happen in war. Unfortunately, this is it, it's terrible, but mistakes happen. But I don't think... The, who's the guy, by the way, who's um, in charge of urban warfare, I think at West Point, Spencer, whatever his name is, mm. he's around trying to tell the world that the Israeli army is like unbelievable what they're doing. And I, I, and even I hear like people like Joe Rogan say that Israel's committing a small Holocaust. I don't remember in the Holocaust food being dropped on parachutes to people in concentration camps. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it, that's so. It's and you know uh, what you know what a lot of it is. What a lot of it is is you know Joe Rogan's on the outer edge of this, but people that are Joe Rogan's age and younger have just been brainwashed by the millions of Muslims that Obama brought here. And they, they don't understand the history. They don't, they don't have a, a perspective. It's not your normal anti-Semitism. I think these are people that have just been brainwashed. I mean, obviously, you know, you see a lot of these, you know, like this, this yeah, I'm going to play later this, um, this Muslim leader in Dearborn who was yelling uh, death to American Israel. That, that's obviously anti-Semitism. But people like Joe Rogan have just been so brainwashed, they're just, they're useful idiots. And, and, and Brian, there's one other thing besides Gaza, the north of Israel with Hezbollah, this doesn't make any news in America. You can't believe, uh, I think there's over 100,000 Israelis now that are not living in the north, okay? There, there's been missiles fired so much from Hezbollah now, and... Um, and I don't, I don't think people realize if Israel wanted to, they could obliterate all of Gaza and everything in it. Yeah. Obliterate them. And you know, let me tell you something. A lot of Israeli kids, because a lot of the Israeli army, they're just kids. My son's only going to be 21 years old. That's it. He doesn't think about it. He's only 20 years old. Look what he's been through. Okay? Yeah. They could obliterate. They could, they could, listen, this is why Israel keeps warning Lebanon now. You don't understand. We don't want to go to war with you, but you're letting Hezbollah shoot all these missiles. Lebanon, Lebanon's going to be, I hate to say it, but if, if, it, if it goes to war, because now they're going to go to war against the country, Lebanon's going to be flat. And I, nobody wants this. You know, and, and, and in this country, in our bigoted media, you know, you, 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 I see women on television, like, these, like on The View and on, on CNN and MSNBC, they have zero sympathy for the Israeli girls that have spent the last six months being raped without mercy in Gaza. That's like it's like they deserve it. I don't understand. There's not even sympathy for the victims. If it was Joy Behar or Senator Coons or it was Nancy Pelosi's granddaughters that were kidnapped and being raped, I'd like to see them uh, how how they would be. Okay, this is sick. But what's much sicker is the. The liberals in South Florida that are still going to vote for this party of, of sickness because it's it, our, our country is going to be destroyed. It, and I just don't understand how people. I, isn't isn't Kamala's isn't Kamala Harris's husband uh, Jewish? Her, his, the husband's son, uh, daughter, I mean, was raising money for uh, Palestinians. That's right. Right, it's no. sick. There's no listen. There's no other. I can say it's the simplest thing. It's demonic because the fact that even that thing with Easter and the, the yeah, demonic, man, demonic, yeah. You can't, you can't look at nothing else makes There's, any sense. No, it is no, it's 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 completely demonic, and you can't you can't try to make sense of it. But when you have Jews raising money for Hamas, that's that is literally that is literally Jews for Hitler. It. it Hamas got a hold of Bernie Sanders. They cut his head off. Yeah. All right. Well. Re all right. Listen. I'm. 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 I'm like. I'm like five minutes late for the break. But it's good to hear from you, Keith. Take care. And I can't believe his kids. I remember when his kids were just little babies uh, running around the radio station. And now look. You know they're fighting these wars. We'll be right back. Making morning radio great again. It's the Steve King Show.
through West Palm and Lake Worth. And Jupiter or left shoulder is blocked with a crash 95 south approaching into the town road cause of heavy delays. This traffic update is sponsored by Lowe's. Shop their best savings for spring during Spring Fest at Lowe's. Right now, save on premium two cubic foot mulch. Buy five bags for just $10 because Lowe's knows home improvement. Offer valid with four tenths like the by location exclusive. Oh, man. If you're on hold, hang in there. I'm going to go to the calls when we get back. I have zero interest in the eclipse. Now, maybe if I were getting a total eclipse here, I might be more interested. But this is not my first partial eclipse. It's supposed to be at uh, what, 147 or something in my neck of the woods. Steve Cage. 
All right, welcome back. It is 37 minutes after the hour. Let's go back to our phones. You're on the air. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Good morning. You're on the air. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Hello? Once. Hey. Go ahead. I hear you. Once. Twice. Oh, all right, Virginia. What's up? Yeah, have you thoroughly investigated uh, this thing about these two Israeli uh, women being raped? I mean, an ID of soldiers in Gaza being raped by Hamas on the daily? What do you mean investigated? Well, uh, I ran across a site on the Internet which uh, showed that uh, the images <laughs> they're putting on the Internet of these two ID of women were actually lifted, lifted from a 2000 mm. Well, I don't know about this particular video you're talking about, but you, when you little when you laughed a little bit there, I when you're talking about rape of women, I don't see where the humor is in that. But but I don't know about this particular video, but you do agree that the uh, Palestinian Hamas terrorist went into that music festival, raped, murdered, and kidnapped women, and took them back to Gaza, and continue to rape them today. You do accept that as truth, right? No, I don't accept that either. Oh. Why not? What, what's funny about rape to you? Let me ask, slow down. That's the second time you've chuckled when we're talking about rape. What's funny about that to you? Well, I don't find rape funny. Well, you've laughed twice. Well, that's all right. It's a free country, right? I have a right to laugh. Well, you have a right to laugh, but you don't have a right to laugh here at the sexual assault of women, no. Oh, really? Okay. That, yeah, you can laugh on your own. You can laugh. You can laugh uh, about it in your house, I guess, in front of your sicko friends. So what? What happened to these women that we saw? M I don't have. I don't have any sicko friends, friend. Mm. Except maybe you. But no, we're not friends. Let's, let's, let's cut this out. Let's cut this out and get to some facts for a change, right? You know that. that did you know that that the Israelis on the October seventh invasion by the Hamas? that the Israelis themselves killed many of their own people? Well, there may have been some friendly fire, but you're, but you're, you're denying that happens in all conflicts, okay? And you see more of it because of the advanced technology we have where every, you know, there's, there were hundreds of videos live streaming and everything during that horrific event. But you said you don't believe that Hamas came in and killed and raped women and kidnapped women? I don't think that it, I don't think that it happened as is being portrayed. What do you What do you think happened? I think that Hamas did the invasion. I think that the Israelis were unprepared for it, even though they had previous warning that was going to happen. And I think that the indiscriminate uh, response killed both Hamas and Israel. Yeah, but what about what What, what about these women that are that have some of them have come back ha who have talked about their sexual assaults. Why don't you believe any of that? Because what, from, from Gaza? There have been women that have been released by the terrorists in Gaza who have come back and talked about their rapes. You don't believe them? Tell me, some, tell me something truthful. Uh, uh, excuse me. No, no, no. You look. Tell me something truthful that a Jew has said. If you do. Excuse me. Tell me something truthful... What? Investigate further. They now, tell me something truthful that a Jew has said. Well, I think there's a lot. No, 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 not you, a Jew. Tell me something truthful that a Jew has said in regards to these uh, god awful attacks on Israel. Well, uh. Mm, uh, uh, yeah. Well, wait a minute, you're interrupting me, right? Yeah, I am interrupting you. Yeah, when I'm talking to Nazis, I'd have a short temper and fuse, and I, you know, I can't give you, you know. Well, you're talking like one. You're, well, you're talking like one. No, no, I believe in America. I'm for America. I'm not for Nazism. I'm not for communism. Mm. Well, then why are you supporting people that want to finish the Holocaust and kill all the Jews, the terrorists? No, I'm not, I'm not supporting either side. I'm saying you want... To not, to not support... I don't have to investigate. We have well... I know people... I was just... Uh, 
the guy that just called in is, is, a, is a friend of mine who I've been friends with for 30 years who lives in Israel, and his son was a, uh, in, in the Israeli army fighting in Gaza. So I don't have to, I've got first person contact, and I know others who are over there as well that are friends of mine and colleagues that I communicate with. All right? Good for you. Good for you. You don't have to. But, but to not take a side is to support the terrorist. You don't have to investigate anything, so therefore you're going to go on with your tirades in favor of Israel. My tirades? What We've saw the video. We've seen the videos of the slaughters. Look. Oh, there again, he's laughing. No, you're not. We're not friends. I, and I, I find it very offensive that you would even call me that. You're on the air. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Yeah, this is Richie. Don't go lying. I mm -hmm. their own videos. They literally took their own videos. Yeah. They just called. They this schmuck that just called. It, they weren't prepared. There was a music festival like you. You have all over the country in this country when you have music festivals. And they were in toilets. They had latrines that they showed their videos. Every, everyone's seen the videos. Everyone has seen the videos. We know. Come on. This is all crap. That's the other thing. That's the other thing about President Trump getting this New York trial and all this crap. There's a video out. I'm sure you have it somewhere. You can look. Where Biden actually put out a hit on, on, on President Trump. Mm -hmm. He said that he belongs in jail and, and he shouldn't be president. It was an insurrection. And the next day, I believe, they attacked Mero, mm. Mr. Mar Lago. Yeah. The bottom line is, it all comes out of Washington. It's all fake crap. It's, it doesn't matter whether they follow the law or not. Like you always say, they don't care. This is a hit job. They want to make a spe spectacle of what's... And, and they've already... They've already you know, the Americans have caught on. Let them have their trials. I hope President Trump actually... I hope he really breaks this order. I hope he actually goes out and makes a major... Well, I, you know, when I really think, and I, I think you might agree with this, uh, I think President Trump wants this corrupt uh, Stormy Daniels judge to order his arrest. I think he really does. Yeah, I do too. I do too. I want him to have a rally. I want him to have a rally and trash this woman. I'm telling you, and she deserves... And let her go put him in jail. You'll see his poll numbers go... Because the American people are already sick of this crap that's going on in this country. This other guy that called up is a total Nazi. He's looking at websites that are put out. But, I mean, you, you, you go on the internet, you can see you can see all sorts of crap. I talk to people that are there. Absolutely. Absolutely. What they plus, plus everything we've seen. We see it. There's, there's li they, they make videos of it, both sides. Uh, we've seen videos from both perspectives. You got peaceniks in this country here that when, if we were attacked at 9 11 when we were attacked, they went to the street protesting for the, for the, uh, the, the, uh, the Arabs. I'm, I'm telling you, this, you have protests for everything in this, in this country. So it, it amazes me, it amazes me, Brian. I'm telling you, I can't believe what this country is all backwards right now. There's a civil war within our. I, you know, I really, I really thought, you know, we had wiped out in this country mainstream racism and anti Semitism, and Biden's brought, bo brought both of it back. I've never. Biden was anti Semitic. Blinken, how can this guy with a straight face go over there and try to give instructions on Israel? And these the eight workers that were killed. That was an accident, okay? Let me tell you something. We took out how many a whole family at the when we were when we were pulling out of Afghanistan. We said we have intelligence and we blew Listen, listen, the guy the, listen, listen. There are, sadly in war there's always coll collateral losses of life and it's it, it's always tragic. However, uh, we just see it now because we have technology in the front lines of every conflict that didn't exist in past conflicts. All right? I mean, it's, it's god-awful. But, come on. I know you got, I know you, this, this will, two seconds, two seconds. We have, we have a border in, in this country that he opened up. Ten million people have probably come through that border. Minimum. In less than three, in less than three years. I want you people to realize something. The Vietnam War, we had two million Americans over there in ten years. Mm -hmm. 
and, and we lost 58. This is a, this, you, you start comparing, this, this guy in the White House is a, is a wrecking ball. And what they're doing with, and what they're doing with the illegals, okay, Remember, if you remember when, uh, you know, uh, Obama, they, they made this a thing. Trump tried to stop it and was unable to. Uh, illegals get counted on the census. And what they're doing is they're, they're moving illegals around uh, in anticipation for the next census because that's how congressional districts are given out after the census. And they're and, and, and that's why and that and they're very. I know it doesn't seem that way because Greg Abbott's sending people here, there, and, and stuff. But the but Biden and his and his and his team of t terrible people are strategically moving the illegals in large numbers to affect the next census to change the um, the the House of Representatives representation, and. Uh, it's, he flew charter flights mm -hmm. directly from the countries, past the border, dropping them off in two major states. There were over 400,000. Yeah. 80% went to Texas and Florida. Yeah. Yeah. And see, and in Florida, what they're doing in Florida is they're also aligning them in areas that will affect our state legislature so Democrats have a chance to take over Tallahassee. It's that What they're doing is very scientific mathematically. I'm really late for the break, Richie. Good to hear from you. If you're on hold, stand by. We'll be right back. The cold, hard truth. Delivered morning 6 to 9 right here. Hello, this is Mike at Friendly Tire. I've been in business 30 years at the same location and offering great deals on new and used tires. I have many suppliers. Whatever car or truck you have, I get you incredible deals on any tire. I also do tire repairs at very low prices. Give me a call. My number is 954-977-9445. I will give you a price over the phone on new and used tires. Again, my number is 954 954- Nine seven seven nine four four five. Thank you. To celebrate all my special occasions, Cafe Chardonnay is the place that I choose. But I'll let you in on a little secret. <clears throat> Cafe Chardonnay turns an ordinary evening into a special occasion. For over thirty years, owners Frank and Gigi have created a restaurant with a unique atmosphere, elegant yet warm and friendly. Cafe Chardonnay features the most precious local farm produce and seafood just caught. Cafe Chardonnay partners with nearby farmers, ranchers, and fishermen to provide the highest quality ingredients. And Chef Frank's talent combines these fresh ingredients to create delicious, novel, exciting dishes. You should every day be a celebration of Cafe Chardonnay. Both Gigi and Tommy are partners hmm. and are fully able to bargain for what they sell. Call 561-627-2662. 561-627-2662. Online at Cafe Chardonnay. Exhausted after work with no energy left in the tank to give your family? Are you having a midday crash on a daily basis? Women, are menopause symptoms like hot flashes, anxiety, and depression making your daily life feel far more difficult than it should? Men, do you feel like you are aging far beyond what you should? Is your sexual life and relationship suffering because of disappointments in the bedroom? Then take action and let our medical team at Lighthouse Medical Center help you stop the symptoms that are holding you back. We use all natural hormone optimization therapies <coughs> with precision technology to help solve your problems. We'll be back in 18 seconds. All right, call is on hold, stand by. You know, I ran over something in my car over the weekend. I don't know what's in it, a 
tack, a nail, I don't know, but I had to put air in one of my tires today. And I went to 7-Eleven because it was low on air and, you know, no other gas stations around and they don't have free air like at Wawa. Do you know how much it cost me to put air in my tire? I couldn't believe this. They took Apple Pay. Very nice. I, I can understand why. $2.50. I almost didn't do it. I said, you know what? I can get free air on the turnpike, but it's too far. It's too far. So I had to put air. They, thank, thankfully, I did because it was lower than I thought. $2.50. That's crazy. Well, I'll be heading over to uh, Friendly Tire in Margate this week. You know, uh, he has new tires as low as $65 a tire. New tires out the door and on the road because remember, Friendly Tire doesn't charge you to balance the tire, mount the tire, or even dispose of your old tires. New tires as low as 65 bucks a tire out the door and on the road. Pretty good deal. But he also does tire repairs. Other tire shops don't. They got every excuse under the sun that they don't do tire repairs. It's, it's, a, it's a racket. Friendly Tire in Margate does tire repairs. And I know that's all I need because uh, I got great tread on those, on those tires. I don't know what I ran over. But anyway, give Mike at Friendly Tire a call. He'll give you a quote right over the phone. 954-977-9445. 954-977-9445. You're on the air. What's your name? Where are you calling from? This is Tubby. How you doing, Brian? All right. What's up? Listen, man, uh, the, the first thing. I'm wondering... Um, <clears throat> Uh, everybody keeps talking about the Democrats and Democrats, including I'm not one, you know, blaming them on what's happening in this country. But everybody that has been up there on both sides of the aisle, whether it's Democrats and Republicans, I'm not talking about those that have been up there more than 40, 30, 50 years that have risked themselves, should all be locked up. And, you know, it's, it's a shame because... Uh, I don't know what's happening here with the American people because I guess they got afraid of after going down and being uh, accused of participating. Mm. A resurrection? <laughs> I don't know if anybody's paying. Listen, 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 listen. They're, what you're talking about is most everybody in Congress, they're just like Biden. They're corrupt. They take bribes. Yes, correct. Yes. How come they're not calling for his arrest? Because... Because, listen, 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 because look what's going on with Trump. I know this is not popular. I said this when Hillary was running. You don't want to start arresting presidents, okay? It's it, because this is America, not some third world country. And, and arresting presidents, everything in America, and, and as far as our legal system is, is, is really mainly based on legal precedent, so much of it. And you start arresting presidents like these monsters have done with our, our great Donald Trump, it sets off a cycle of events in a country that you, you don't want, even when they're criminals, you do not want to arrest presidents and first ladies. Let me ask you something, Brian, and this is, this is exactly where we are. I'm not talking about arresting them on frivolous things and decisions, but when a, when a president is, is clearly in front of everybody's face, Allowing an invasion of the, of, of the country. Yes. Aiding and abetting. The, Correct. Uh, the army should be there. All right. Okay. Okay. All right. The army. Yeah, that's just what we want. This woke army that General Milley put together. I mean, you know, oh, that's just insanity. Now, I'll tell you this. Over the weekend, uh, President Trump broke a 100% broke all fundraising records by raising 50 Point five million dollars at a single fundraiser the other night. Okay, Saturday night, a fundraising record fifty point five million dollars he raised broke all fundraising records. And remember, last week the 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 mainstream corporate fake news media spent all last week. Look at Biden; he raised twenty five million. He had two presidents with him, so he had three presidents. Who's that that overweight lady singer? Lizzo. I, I, I never even heard of Lizzo before, you know, Lizzo, whatever other celebrities, he raised 25 million, three presidents. I guess she's famous. I, I don't know. You know, when I was in high school, I, you know, I was really into music and I said, I remember thinking I'm always going to be into the hip music. I don't even know. I'm still, I'm listening to eighties and nineties stuff all the time, but, um, he had celebrities and two other presidents. He raised less than half of what president Trump raised in one night. 
And it's not a coincidence that the Trump family just took over the RNC. This really shows you how much the Republican establishment was working to lose elections, right? You know, and, and notice how the media that were bragging all week about this less than half that Biden raised was some big deal. Trump raises 50.5 million in one night at one event and it's psh, crickets, crickets. And you know, these, these guys that don't, I know they'll want to, oh, they're billionaires and millionaires. Yeah, who else donates that kind of money? Groceries are up 40%. Regular working people don't have a lot of extra uh, cash to donate, okay? We got to buy food, the basic necessities that have increased so much under Biden's reign. But these people that uh, donated 50 and a half million to President Trump's reelection campaign the other night, that, that, that's better than a poll. They, these are not people that just throw money away, okay? These are people who see that this guy's coming back in November, and we need him. I mean, if, if President Trump is not reelected in November, our country as we know it is over. And that's not, that's not an exaggeration because these, these creepy, sleazy, racist, anti-Semitic, anti-American, communist Democrats, and that's very mild, uh, description of what Democrats are today, uh, they, would, they would take a Trump loss as a mandate to not only continue all this BS they're doing, but to quadruple down on all of it. And our country's done if Trump's not reelected. I don't have a worry in the world. And, and all the indicators, uh, you know, it's fine. And In fact, on election night, I'm going to go to bed early like I do every election night so I can be well rested the next morning so we can discuss it here. But um, I, that's how confident I am. And you should be too. Look at Trump. These guys that donated 50.5 million to him on, on Saturday night. Just think they threw that money at him for nothing? No. They're confident he's going to win too. All right. We're going to take our break for the top of the hour. Um, did you see, by the way, another cargo ship, this time in New York, lost power as it was approaching a bridge? I've never heard of freighters losing power. Now we got two. Luckily, this one didn't hit anything. All right, we'll take our break for the top of the hour. Come back with more calls. Steve Kane will be joining us. And, um, of course, you're welcome to call in. It's toll-free, 888 465 888-465-2631. My name is Brian Craig. It's the Steve Kane Show, Florida's longest-running radio show. We'll be right back. Yeah, I know. I saw that. Yeah, I didn't know if she really meant that. I thought it was a joke too. So yeah, <laughs> she should. She yeah. I I've never, I never even heard her saying. I don't know. She, I mean, she's all right, but yeah. She, she had a lot of uh, old issues like she mm -hmm. her back on dance with like eating appropriate stuff or being mm -hmm. with. Mm-hmm. So she got a lot of backlash on that, and I think she was trying to use that. And she's yeah. Like, oh, you targeted. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, must have been. Something happened. Last. That's traffic. 
Under my leadership, the Republican Party The Repub All right, the third hour has begun. I'm Brian Craig. This is the Steve Kane Show. Steve Kane joining us. Hey, Steve. All right, uh, I was saving this for you. The president, Donald Trump, has released a video statement on abortion. And uh, you want to hear it? I've not heard it yet. I've not listened to it yet, uh, but it is. we may have to stop as we go along because it's four minutes and 26 seconds long. But this has been like anticipated. Like today, he was supposed to make a, a, a statement on abortion. Now, before we, pl I've not listened to it, other than the first part where I could hear that it works, uh, the first syllable or two. Um, remember, President Trump overturned Roe v. Wade. Tens of thousands of babies have, maybe even more, maybe we've gotten over 100,000, but. Tens of thousands of babies have been born because Donald Trump overturned Roe v. Wade. Okay? And millions upon millions of people, tens of millions, maybe even hundreds of millions over the course of time will be born because Donald Trump overturned Roe v. Wade. So no matter what this says, and I have no idea what he says, remember that. Don't let anyone tell you that uh, Donald Trump uh, is, is not pro-life. So let's, you want to hear it? Okay, again, I have no idea what he's going to say. All right, let's go. President Trump, he just released this this morning on Truth Social. The party will always support the creation of strong, thriving, and healthy American families. We want to make it easier for mothers and families to have babies, not harder. That includes supporting the availability of fertility treatments like IVF in every state in America like the overwhelming majority of Americans, including the vast majority of Republicans, <clears throat> conservatives, Christians, and pro-life Americans, I strongly support the availability of IVF for couples who are trying to have a precious baby. What could be more beautiful or better than that? Today, I'm pleased that the Alabama legislature has acted very quickly and passed legislation that preserves the availability of IVF in Alabama. They really did a great and fast job. The Republican Party should always be on the side of the miracle of life and the side of mothers, father, their beautiful babies, and that's what we are. IVF is an important part of that, and our great Republican Party will always be with you in your quest for the ultimate joy. Okay, now, by the way, the IVF, that's the test tube babies, okay? So I, I don't know why test tube babies is a controversy, but with some 
It is. Right. Many people have asked me what my position is on abortion and abortion rights, especially since I was probably the person responsible for the ending of something that all legal scholars, both sides, wanted and, in fact, demanded. <coughs> be ended. Roe v. Wade. They wanted it ended. It must be remembered that the Democrats are the radical ones on this position because they support abortion up to and even beyond the ninth month. The concept of having an abortion in the later months and even execution after birth, and that's exactly what it is. The baby is born, the baby is executed after birth, is unacceptable, and almost everyone agrees with that. My view is now that we have abortion where everybody wanted it from a legal standpoint, the states will determine by vote or legislation or perhaps both, and whatever they decide must be the law of the land, in this case, the law of the state. Many states will be different. Many will have a different number of weeks, or some will have more conservative than others, and that's what they will be. At the end of the day, this is all about the will of the people. You must follow your heart or, in many cases, your religion or your faith. Do what's right for your family and do what's right for yourself. Do what's right for your children. Do what's right for our country and vote. So important to vote. At the end of the day, it's all about will of the people. That's where we are right now, and that's what we want, the will of the people. I want to thank the six justices, Chief Justice John Roberts, Clarence Thomas, Samuel Alito, Brett Kavanaugh, Amy Coney Barrett, and Neil Gorsuch, incredible people, for having the courage to allow this long-term, hard-fought battle to finally end. This 50-year battle over Roe v. Wade took it out of the federal hands and brought it into the hearts, minds, and vote of the people in each state it was really something. Now it's up to the states to do the right thing. Like Ronald Reagan, I am strongly in favor of exceptions for rape, incest, and life of the mother. You must follow your heart on this issue, but remember, you must also win elections to restore our culture and, in fact, to save our country, which is currently, and very sadly, a nation in decline. Our nation needs help. It needs unity. It needs us all to work closely together. Democrat, Republican, liberal, conservative, everyone, we have to work together. We have to bring our nation back from the brink, and that's where it is. It's at the brink, and we will. We will do it. I promise you, we will do it. Always go by your heart, but we must win. We have to win. We are a failing nation, but we can be a failing nation no longer. We will make our nation great. We will make our nation greater than ever before. Thank you very much. All right, that's it. That sounds fine to me. Uh, yeah, boy, he can tell you with words, can he? Well, what do you, what do you think? He can't come in my gun. Well, you know, listen, the Republican Party position has always been what he just said. Overturn Roe v. Wade and let the states decide. So, you know, now what now, now the never Trumpers in the media, they're going to spin that as he's pro-abortion and pro-choice. That's what they're going to do with that. But, you know, all these other Republicans who had talked since I was a, around, because, you know, um, about overturning Roe v. Wade, none of them ever intended on overturning Roe v. Wade. He actually did it and did what the, in the that's what the, re I remember when he ran the first time, they made such a big deal for him to sign off on the Republican Party platform. He did, and this was the first thing on the Republican Party platform, overturn Roe v. Wade. So don't let anybody tell you he's pro-choice because he's not, he's pro-life. Now this thing about exception for rape and incest, I mean, I'm not in favor of abortion at all, okay? Um, but what do, you, what do you have any thoughts on that, Steve? Or No, I mean, it's breathtaking and it's uh, complexity. Yeah, well, yeah. It's it's hard. It's like boxing with, well, with a shadow. I mean, how do you? I wouldn't know how to attack it to begin. With. There's nothing to attack. It's all what he said was perfect. You you hit the nail right on the head. Yeah. Nothing to attack. It's a totally brilliant word masterpiece. Yeah. Yeah. It really is hard to attack because it is like a shadow. Yeah, totally perfect. 
And, you know, this thing about rape and incest, okay, where he said there should be an exception. Ronald Reagan thought there should be an exception, you know. And Ro Ronald Reagan was so pro-life. Ronald Reagan actually talked about um, how some abortions are, are done to affect how inheritances are handed out. And, we, and he used to talk about this stuff all the time. He was very pro-life. The thing about the exception for rape and incest, okay, um, with, this, with this morning after pill, and, and, and such that aren't being outlawed. You can still, we'll still be able to get that, you know, especially in this age of the internet, okay? Um, rape and incest, 99.9% .9 of those would be handled that way anyway, right? It would never even get to the point where you would be going to a doctor because they have these over-the-counter things. Or if you're, um, uh, a vi you know, if you're a victim of one of these things, you go, you call the police, you go to the hospital, they give them a pill in the hospital. I think what he said was perfect, and I think he said it in a way that's going to make it very difficult for a credible woman to take issue with. How can you be against letting the states decide? Because that means that some states, the, the wackadoodle liberal states, are going to have abortion up to like the 15th year. You know what I mean? It'll never, you know, they'll have zero restrictions. All right, you're on the air. Yeah, you want to take some, hold on, caller. Very well. Is it the bottom line of this is it's hard to attack. Unless you're dishonest. Yeah. Yes. And, and unless you're trying to oversimplify. Yeah, exactly. Let's take a call or let's take a call or two before we break. You're on the air. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Oh, Christopher. Good morning, General. Hey, Chris. Good morning. Uh, it was right on, right on the money. Uh, again, he just re uh, You know, Again, a Republican position in the state, you know, and everyone voting. And exactly, you're right, Brian. Uh, you know, I've been in law enforcement. Rape has not been an issue uh, since the '90s because of the uh, the morning after pill before it was available to the public was a part of the day rape kits at the police station. So yeah, um, it hasn't been an issue. And, and truth be told, the young lady that uh, was the subject of the abortion uh, with, with uh, Roe v. Wade, she she really spoke out against it before she died, well before she died. And, and, and you know what? The Roe v. Wade woman never had an abortion. And, and yeah. And, and she, they lied. You know, they had her, they forced her, so she lied about it. And, uh, rape wasn't. And, and you know, the, the floozy, the floozy uh, women and girls, right, they, they have these morning after pills in their purses everywhere they go. Exactly. And, and I have news for them. Like I used to tell my sons when they were growing up, you have more to worry about than pregnancy. There's still diseases that'll kill you, so be more, be more careful with it. Yeah. I just leave with it. Yeah, but I'm telling you, they're going to take, because he said, like Ronald Reagan, I support an exception for rape and incest. The mainstream media are going to take that as he's pro-choice uh, today. Absolutely. And you know, the, the worst part is, really, when people think of abortion, they do think of the first trimester deal, which, you know, the first 12 weeks or whatever, they don't think about a crowning head coming out of a vagina yeah. drilled into the, to the skull to kill it. Mm. Those are the things that people are lobbying for, but they don't tell you the truth. Yeah. It's horrible, these abortions, these late-term abortions. It's ridiculous. Mm -hmm. All right, well, it's good to hear from you. Thanks for the call, Chris. Chris is, Chris is the guy that had our back when they called the police on us at our personal appearance because we brought business to the mall. Can't bring business to the mall. Call the cops. There's people here that want to do business. They want to buy stuff from the mall. Call the police. All right, we'll take our um, first break of the third hour and be right back. Don't sit on the sidelines. Get in on the action. Call the Steve King Show live on air now. 888 go Kane one This is the Steve King Show with Brian Craig. <laughs> When it comes to dental work, there's no one better than Dr. Gupta at Brighton Dental. But don't just take my word for it. This is Richie the bus driver. He called in on the air to share his experience with Dr. Gupta. You're on the air. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Yeah, this is Richie. Dr. Gupta. I go 139 miles to this guy. I had a broken tooth. He fixed it. It was supposed to be kept for it lasted two years. He put dentures in my mouth that are a lot cheaper than anybody else. And he's excellent and no pain. I recommend this guy. He, to me, he's the best ever. So I want to get that out of the way. Listen to Richie the Bus Driver. Go see Dr. Gupta at Brighton Dental. 954-922-4633. 954-922-4633. Look up in the sky on a t-shirt, a hoodie, or a hat. It's the Print Hero. The Print Hero.
Frontier and team is made up of expert designers and printers, each with their own unique superpowers. Like President Trump Trump just company look great. Stand out with your unique lifestyle. The Print Hero has you covered. Let your business soar with Print Hero. Display your logo, love, lifestyle, or whatever you want the world to see on a t-shirt, hoodie, or hat. Best prices and fast turnaround time. Print Hero, a company that goes above and beyond to deliver top quality products and services to their clients. Learn more at theprinthero.com. Up, up, and away. Good morning, Brian. It's Alicia, and my husband and I received our My Pillow 2.0 that we ordered with Kay the other day to finally get one free. And they're our first My Pillows, and we love them. We absolutely love them. They're just absolutely marvelous. Yeah, I'm so glad. I got slippers on the way, too. Go to mypillow.com and use our promo code Kane to check out K A N E and buy your My Pillow 2.0. Right now, buy one, get one free. You can also order by phone, toll free, 800 716 4879. 1 800 716 4879. Promo code Kane. Now, back to the Steve Kane Show with Brian Gray. <coughs> Listen in the Palm Beaches on 95.9 FM, the Treasure Coast on 1069 FM. Here all right, we are back 18 minutes after the hour. I'm Brian Steve King here. You know, we had Ian from Cruise and Travel Depot called in earlier, and I forgot to ask him if the cruise line will let me bring a boxed MyPillow mattress topper on board because I have not slept without a MyPillow mattress topper in years, and I'm so accustomed to that perfect night's sleep. You know, uh, the MyPillow mattress toppers, which come in every mattress size, are as much as 50% off with our promo code Kane at checkout, K-A-N-E, at MyPillow.com. If you have a mattress that's lumpy, that's bumpy, that's old and worn out, that's lopsided, that happens a lot of times with mattresses, before you buy a new mattress, go and get your MyPillow mattress topper, as much as 50% off and free shipping, because... It's free shipping at MyPillow.com on all orders, seventy-five to over $75 with our promo code KANE, K-A-N-E. So you get free shipping on the mattress topper. It comes in all mattress sizes. It will change the way you sleep. I was talking earlier. See, I get about three, four hours of sleep a night, and I'm well-rested. You hear me now? Because those three or four hours I get are well rested sleep because of the my pillow mattress topper as much as 50 percent off with our promo code kane at checkout k-a-n-e plus free shipping on orders over 75 dollars now again you you can take advantage of all the specials at mypillow.com with our promo code kane at checkout but if i just i highlight what my favorites and if i only could have one my pillow product it would be that mattress topper it's that good you can also order by phone toll free 1-800-716-4879 1-800-716-4879, promo code Kane K-A-N-E. You know, the Republican, it, it, just apart from abortion, the Republican position on most everything has always been let the states decide, right? And, and you know, if you, you know, certain states, what's right for Florida and what's right for California people are two different things. So, yeah. <clears throat> Mm -hmm. variety of stories that they have and it's like the world is coming apart at the seams it's just endless violent stories and the amazing story I thought, in fact I thought sure when I saw it you were going to leave with it uh, is there's is, is almost another tanker accident no I did talk about that earlier yeah they, another an, uh, this time in New York uh, another uh, cargo ship lost power which I've never heard yeah, uh, and near a bridge. It didn't hit the bridge this time. But I have never in my life heard of these huge cargo ships and freighters and tankers losing power before. Now two of them in, what, a week? Way beyond. It, it was exactly the same. Mechanically, it was basically the same story as the other. Well. The difference being that they managed to stop it before they hit it. And when I brought this up, you, you thought I was nuts talking about um, terrorism. This, this, this really, if this doesn't prove the point you were trying to make, nothing would. I mean, it's, and that, and, and also, although now it's become a regular, everyday occurrence uh, the, the, that's going on, they, they had another, uh, oh, shut up, blanked out. I don't know. 
I don't know. But, no, the tanker story is really uh, – it would be interesting how much coverage that gets after the first one. I mean, I have – I have never, never heard of one a ship uh, like this losing power. They because uh, ever. What I was going to say, it has to do with this, these uh, airliners having their engines dissolve in midair. Another one of those attacks. It's, it's become an everyday occurrence that an engine falls off a plane. Well, that's that's why. I would never get on a plane. I know that's considered an overreaction? No. No. I, I used to, Steve, I used to fly all the time before 9-11. And then after 9-11, you can probably count on one hand how many times I've flown. And uh, that's why I travel by cruise ship, like we're doing April 27th on the Celebrity Beyond. I, cruise ships, I, I no problems. And I just drive to the port, park in the parking garage, and walk to the ship. But, you know, this... Um, uh, this one, you're talking about the one where the wing and, and the metal was flapping? My goodness, was that another Boeing plane? Uh, I, didn't, uh, I, I didn't read that specific, but I bet you anything. You know, um, the, I know that you're not supposed to say this, but this diversity, inclusion, what's the I stand for? Incompetence? I don't know what it stands for. But <laughs> diversity, equity, inclusion, this DEI thing, um, it's, it's got to have something to do with it. I mean, there's just, I'm sorry. There's too many, there's too many plain problems going on. There's too many problems going on. And every problem in our society, you can trace it to Democrats. If a thing like that would happen at random with, with a man like, uh, Pete Putin. Oh, he's all over it. At the, uh, the helm of the agency. Mm-hmm. You know, the thing about it is, if, and, and I mean this, this, I think this is a true statement. Um, they're not making a big deal about these things with the planes. You, you see it in the news a little bit, but they're not really making a big deal. If it was a plane filled with illegals they were moving across the country, then you'd be hearing about it if it was their newcomers. But they're really, you know, sitting on these stories, and there's, a, there's something wrong with these planes. And I, I'm a little nervous about it. My daughter's flying here for the, for the cruise. I, I, um, I have not flown sober since 9-11, and I'm not a drinker. I... When I went to California a couple months ago, I went to the airport a couple hours early, and uh, I didn't get on the plane until I had four screwdrivers. Um, well, before I fly, I am. I am. I, 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 cannot, I do not like to fly. I'm terrified. of. I never used to be until 9-11. So I, I, go to the, uh, I go to the lounge and get tanked before I get on a plane, and then it's, it's uh, smooth sailing. You know, and uh, I just fall asleep and wake up when we're landing, and it's cool. You know, I kind of pass out on the planes. I do. I just don't like it. Don't like it at all. And you know, the, the we we had a bad enough time after 9/11, but at least you know, like remember the shoe bomber? He tried to let it set his. No, 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 no. That was the Unabomber, the shoe bomber. I forget his name. He was the Muslim terrorist. And he tried to light his shoes on fire. He had this shoe bomb, and everybody, it was after 9 11, and everybody on the plane jumped on the guy and stopped him, and they arrested him. He went to prison. You know, he's probably out and teaching at Harvard now, right? But <laughs> they let Jihad Johnny Walker Lynch out. You know, he, he, he took part in killing a, an American. But anyway, um, that, you know, the terrorism wasn't as bad because. I, I remember what it was like to fly not long. I, I flew when, right after 9-11. I uh, flew to Boston. I, had to, I went to New York and Boston. And I, and I know I'm not the only one that had this experience, okay? Everybody, when you would get on a plane, this was after 9-11, would kind of look at each other just to, you know, okay. You know, and if something happened, you, everybody was going to be like, you know, Scott Beamer, Right. But when you look out the window and pieces of the plane are flying off, there's nothing you can do about that, right? So I, I, I got to tell you, what I'm seeing going on with, with these planes now is more frightening to me than after 9-11. Because if some guy pulled something on a plane, all the guys, we were going to jump them. With this, what are you, you going to do? Go out on the wing? You know, n nothing you can do. You can just pray. And um, that's, that's it, you know? And we, we haven't seen, 9-11 is a different thing with the hijackings, but it, it used to, the plane crashes used to be a semi-regular occurrence, right? Remember those, those um, 
what was it that used to crash all the time? The DC tens. We, you know, we had that value jet in the Everglades, you know, and there was another crash back in the seventies in the Everglades. Plane crashes used to be somewhat common. And 9-11 aside, because that was a different event, plane crashes of American aircraft have almost disappeared. Now, we haven't had any, thank the Lord, but when I see pieces of wings flapping and that, you know, 200 mile an hour winds that's coming off that wing or however fast the plane's going, there's something going on here. All of a sudden, we're having uh, things fall off planes, planes falling apart, uh, P, you know, uh, planes opening up in flight. Buttigieg once again get up there and say, oh, well, I know flying is the safest way to travel. Well, that's nonsense. And yeah, exactly. And exactly. And, you know, the thing is, there's only been one change in the airline industry in the last couple of years where we've seen these bizarre things happen that we're seeing. And that's this... Um, diversity, inclusion, equity thing that they're always talking about. That's the only difference in the, in the uh, airline industry that I've seen in the last couple of years since all of a sudden we're seeing these, really, all these things we're seeing with airplanes in this country that are going wrong is incompetence. These, are all, these things are all preventable, but incompetence is what's resulting in it. And, the, and that's, that's when people start to wonder, well, this diversity, inclusion, equity, or whatever, that makes people nervous. And you know what? It should. Because there's, when it comes to things, you know, you, you get in a tube that's made of tin. It flies hundreds of miles an hour way up in the sky. You, you, you don't want people working on that plane because they're like Jean-Pierre. They could check off some boxes. Okay, this is a transgendered gay something, okay, you got the job, you're in charge of the wings, you know, you're in charge of the engines because we got you off, we needed, we needed to check off these other check marks for the guy that bolts the engines to the plane. That's not what I want. I want, I want a well-trained engineer, mechanic, I don't know who's in charge, I don't, I don't, I don't want to worry about it, but now you do. All right, listen, let's take our break for the bottom of the hour. Our number is toll-free, one triple eight four six five twenty six thirty one triple eight four six five twenty six thirty one. It's the Steve Kane Show. Steve Kane is here. My name is Brian Craig. We'll be back with your calls after this. Making.
Job two, residential roofing and repair, <coughs> schools, municipal buildings, office buildings, emergency repairs. If it's roofing, Tom <coughs> Laporta can do it. Call Tom Laporta right now on his cell phone, 954-604-4602. 954-604-4602. And online, LaportaContracting.com. Join us for the Greater South. All right, we are back. I'm Brian Craig. Steve Kane is here. You know, Rush Limbaugh, he used to talk about these things on the mainstream media like CNN. Uh, Remember this, uh, an accidental case of journalism? Like when, (laughs) remember that? I missed, you know, like something truthful would like actually get said on CNN or MSNBC. And we have one of those moments right now over at CNN over the weekend It was one of those accidental cases of journalism during Jake Tapper's program. Something was said that wasn't supposed to be said on CNN. The truth. Okay? And I'm going to play it for you in a second. And uh, this this lady on the panel, uh, she won't be back. You know, she's going to go the way. Her and Rhonda McDaniel will be at the, uh, the pundit unemployment office together after this truth. But President Trump said over the weekend that he would be honored to go to jail for violating the gag order that the skanky or uh, Stormy Daniel judge put on him. And remember, the judge in the Stormy Daniels case is the judge whose daughter has been paid $10 million by the Biden campaign and the Adam Schiff campaign, right? And I I would say that uh, this political consultancy, consultancy job that she has is to the judge and his, uh, what Hunter and Burisma are to Joe, right? And they were talking about um, 
Trump, of course, on CNN. And they have this um, pundit on who I've never heard before. And she's talking about the distrust that the American people are gaining for our judicial system because of the lawfare tactics being used against the greatest president ever, Donald Trump. So listen to this exchange. And then towards the end of it is when some hardcore truth comes out and you, they're pissed. This is during Jake Tapper's show. For Donald Trump. Donald Trump just had his largest, biggest um, small dollar donations in March. Um, grassroots small dollar donations. You know, the American people are waking up to the fact and they're they're seeing and feeling, they believe that our judicial system is is sort of rigged, right, against Donald Trump. You mean by the like insurance? Like lawfare, absolutely. Well, for example, the um, Judge Juan Merchant in the, the Hush Money case. Um, Donald, his daughter... His daughter, for crying out loud, raises money for Adam Schiff and Kamala Harris mm. using the ploy that we will lock up Donald Trump. Yep, go ahead. Look, I, I, I and Donald Trump will keep raising small dollar money on that. Absolutely, that just needs to recuse himself from that case. Here's the thing. Yeah. Okay. So and we got a little information from this accidental case of journalism that I did not even know that she's raising money to make her ten million dollars by saying. Give me the money, give me the money, and we're gonna lock we're gonna lock up Donald Trump, which is you know this and this is the daughter of the judge in the Stormy Daniels case. I mean, think about this, and these are federal charges against him, uh, even though Bragg doesn't have federal jurisdiction. These are charges of campaign finance reform. these These are criminal charges, not um, you know, not uh, civil cases. So when you've got the judge's adult daughter, I know the media want you to think that the daughter's like eight years old or something. But when you have the the judge's adult daughter saying, give me money. Yeah, I'm working for Biden. I'm working for Adam Schiff. But give me money, millions of dollars. I got paid 10 million. We're going to we're going to lock Donald Trump. We're going to put Donald Trump in jail. If if that is if, if there is no corruption with this judge, if the judge is totally legit, he would say, you know what, there's a conflict of interest. I'm going to recuse myself. The fact that he not only does he not recuse himself, that he keeps sending out orders telling Trump not to talk about this family scandal makes me think that it is corrupt. They can't, you know, that that, that she is the money launderer for the family. I mean, come on, you know, you th- why else does she have a job where she made $10 million from Biden and Schiff? You know, I can never get you to watch Mark Levin, but... Oh, he's terminally boring. Levin did a huge uh, thing on all these trials of what's good. What you're talking about here, and it was absolutely frightening. Yeah. This, I mean, they, basically, the bottom line of what Mark Levin's show was about last night was the fact that these, these the, the remaining trials, the three, two or three that are left... Are all loaded, uh, being headed by. Uh, they're going to vote to uh, a felony conviction. Yeah, we got. Uh, yeah. yeah. He'll pardon himself. Oh, well, if the timing's right. Yeah. We got one good judge, which is the judge here in Florida, right? A judge that he appointed in the documents case. But in the J6 case, I mean, I want you to think about this. So we've got the one judge in the Stormy Daniels case who uh, his daughter has, been, has made $10 million off of Biden and Adam Schiff by saying, give us money, give us money, we're going to put Trump in jail. That's the judge's daughter in the Stormy Daniels case, right? That's a, that's, those are fe- that's a felony case. The J6 case in D.C., the judge was a partner at Hunter Biden's law firm. So she was Hunter's boss at the law firm. And as a partner, his, he had one big client, Burisma, so the judge in the J6 case, that's Judge Chunkin, was Hunter Biden's boss, and she got Burisma money because she's a partner. That means she, that's equity, right? She owns part of the practice from Burisma. So, I mean, yeah, these are the judges who are judging Trump. Yeah, it's, it's, it's insanity. It's, it's hard to believe this stuff's even real. Are they waiting for the, for the trial to be over for the appeals? Is that- well, you can't appeal till there's a verdict, right? Saying, yeah, I guess this you got to have a verdict before you appeal, and there's no verdict, you know? Yeah. But I'll tell you what, though, 
as crazy as this sounds and as stupid as this is, they are planning, you know, we keep talking about what's going to happen in, at the convention, right? Like, and I'm telling you, they've got plans for Buttigieg. He's on every show, every weekend. He's all over the place. You notice? Yeah, they, yeah. So they got, why is Mayor Pete on all the shows all of a sudden? You know, this summer's the conventions. So maybe he'll be Kamala's replacement. They, you know, I don't know. But it, he's, uh, but Mayor Pete is not on all of these uh, shows all the time doing interviews for nothing. He doesn't like to work. He's basically retired as transportation secretary. He said something really stupid. I'm sure this will get a lot of play today about how much safer it is for him to walk through uh, D.C. now than it was when Trump was president. Now, what he leaves out of that is he has a Secret Service detail. So everywhere he goes, you know, I mean, he's very stupid. But they, they got plans for him, Mayor Pete. There's, there's, he's not doing these interviews just to do them, right? And it's not because of the ship, you know, but there's a, there's a reason behind it. So I'm wondering if they're going to replace Kamala with Mayor Pete, who I, I find Mayor Pete to be very weird. Don't, I mean, he's just a weird guy. And I don't mean the gay stuff. I mean, even if he were straight, he's just a weird dude. Very weird. Now, if you're on hold, stand by. We're going to take our last break of this Monday morning, and then we'll come back with um, your calls. There's a couple other things I'll try to get to as well. Our number is toll-free, 1-888-465-2631. We'll be right back. <clears throat> All right, and it's time for the first look at gold, silver, and the other precious metals from the offices of William Youngerman Incorporated in Boca. William Youngerman, good morning. How are the metals starting off this week? <clears throat> Starting off very strong again overnight, we saw gold hit a new record high, $2,345 on the high. It is pulling back right now for a little profit taking, but uh, yeah, uh, Friday we saw gold gain $38.50 an ounce, closing out the week at $2,329.20 the ounce. Silver gained $0.58, cents, closing out the week at $27.44 the ounce, while platinum was down $4 at 926 and palladium closed out the week at 986 down $18. As I said, overnight we saw gold get up to $2,345. The low was 2322 Right now we're at 2326 That's down $3.20. Silver up $0.11 cents right now at $27.55 the ounce. Platinum up $11 at 937 And palladium up $18 at $1,004. So the markets continue to trade very similar patterns. Uh, for the last few weeks, uh, uh, putting in new highs and then uh, pulling back a little bit and then regaining those, those highs and, and even going higher. So uh, you got to buy any of the dips as we... Absolutely. So what's the recommendation today? You open up at 10 a.m. What are you recommending people do today so far as what, what they pick up? I, I still love the gold and silver mm -hmm. numbers right now. They're, they're actually... Uh, uh, silver looks like it wants to go to at least $30 an ounce. Uh, plat, uh, gold, uh, we could see $2,600 on gold this year. Wow, wow. This is, this is at 2600 on gold. Oof, you hear that, guys? So this is the time. Now, William Youngman, of course, opens up at 10 a.m. You can stop in. He's located in Boca at 150 East Palmetto Park Road in Boca, uh, just east of US-1 Federal Highway on the south side of Palmetto Park Road uh, in the same uh, building as the Bank of America. It's the Bank of America building. He is located in the lobby directly across from the bank. You can also give him a call, 1-800-327-5010. 1-800-327-5010. And online, williamyoungerman.com. All right, William Youngerman, we'll talk tomorrow. Okay, have a great day. All right, back after this. Justice Warriors for breakfast. Now the Steve Kane Show is on... All right, and we are back. I'm Brian Craig. Steve Kane, of course, is here, and you're on the air. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Brian from Deerfield. Hey, Brian. Hey, guys. How are you today? Hi, Steve. Uh, you know, you talk about Mayor Pete and the problems they're having in the in the transportation industry with the you know the the, the planes and, and 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 the car and all that. What qualifications does Mayor Pete have being the mayor of a small town in, in Indiana, South Bend, to be head of the Secretary of Transportation? And, and let me tell you, South, South Bend, 
and just for, for context, okay, everybody's heard of South Bend even before Mayor Pete. Being, uh, South Bend is like the size of Tamarack. No, I'm serious. No, they did. That's all they got. I mean, yeah. When I see this guy, I think it's one of the worst. When you see him when he's got to go out in the public and go to a site where something happens, like say East Palestine, Ohio, or something like that, this is the guy who looks totally out of place, has no idea what's going on, I say, at a construction site. He looks like he's never even been on one. And this guy's the Secretary of Transportation. Well, it, S Secretary of Transportation historically is a, a do nothing cabinet post where they give. A, a post to someone who did them a favor, like I guess he helped. He he was popular and he endorsed when he dropped out. But it just so happened we've had no we've had nothing but trouble. Right, the supply chain, the baby formula shortage, the ship, the train. I mean, it's been planes, train. Now it planes, planes, trains, and automobile disasters. And and he's he's checked out. No, and plus he's got the push pull because he's had the Kennedy family backing him for for decades for big positions. See, a lot of people. Uh, this is this is the thing about I haven't talked about this in a long time because he's been out of the loop. But I'll tell you, people need to understand that Mayor Pete is is a Kennedy. When he when when um because you're wondering how did this weird guy get to be when he was in high school he entered he wrote a term paper on uh, Bernie Sanders about how he stood up to his party, a Profiles in Courage thing about how Bernie Sanders stood up against the, the party to do what he thought was right. It was, he entered it into a, uh, a competition that the, the uh, John F. Kennedy Foundation had going on nationally. He won the essay in high school. Um, uh, Carol, uh, they took him to, to uh, uh, Massachusetts he, uh, Carolyn Kennedy, President Kennedy's daughter, and Ted Kennedy, who was alive at the time, gave him an award. They took him under his wing. They, that, they got him into the Navy. Everybody the Kennedys take under their wing, except Obama, they send to the Navy to do a, you know, like a John F. Kennedy thing. He, he, he got into the Navy uh, while he came back and run for president. He's a Kennedy. He's a gay Kennedy. He's a, he's a Kennedy apprentice for this. Yes. You hear this guy talking with, and like, there's, there's not a lot going on upstairs, I'm afraid, but. No. I mean, this is a DEI and affirmative action, and if you're connected with the Kennedys or a powerful family, you become Secretary of Transportation. What does he know about these planes? What does he know about the problem? He knows, he does, you know what? He doesn't even know how to fly on them because, you know, he, 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 if it's not first class, Pete ain't going. And he's got the look on his face like uh, there's nothing going on upstairs. And this guy, they, they're trying to get him in a position. Of you, you know what he's, you know what he's like. I, I'll tell you who he's. He's like Greta Thunberg. He's he's. <laughs> no, I'm serious. He's a, no, 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 no. He's, I, what I mean by that is, except she's more masculine. Um, but but what I mean is these are creations. He's not he's not like a real organic person. He's a trained spokesmodel. So is he going to is he going to get a big uh, speaking engagement at the uh, Democratic convention in that call? Oh, there, there's 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 something there is something going on with Mayor Pete. Believe me, the last thing he wants to do are interviews just to do them with all this disaster uh, connected to his his department. Everything is everything is that, but he's one, I think he's one of the worst ones in the cabinet. I mean, really, for the guy they're hyping and stuff. They all suck. Put this guy in position, make a run for. You know, you know what I'd be curious. You know what I'd be really curious about with Mayor Pete. This is, and I, that's not a joke. He's the Secretary of Transportation. I wonder if he has a valid driver's license, and when is the last time he drove a car? Well, yeah, I don't. Obama had, uh, Obama had a transportation guy that. Did, I'm serious. Yeah. Yeah. I'm serious. I'm in a position. You have the, like the least qualified people holding these positions, and. Mm -hmm. He's just getting screwed up. And it's another thing to do outside of the DEI before there was affirmative action. It's a disgrace. It's just political connections. And it's just That's right. And it's, and it's taking the merit base out of our country, which is so important. See, see like, like President Kennedy and, and these others, like President, President Trump did his cabinet. Like Pre President Kennedy, he hires a cab cabinet secretary who's like, you know, the CEO of Ford Motor Company. Right. Not some guy because he's gay. Who says I'm gay and I got a boyfriend, a husband, and and all of a sudden you're in the cabinet, you know? All right, pre yeah. Well, that's why things are falling off of airplanes. 
All right, take take care, take care. Okay, now um, I have not listened to this yet, so I'm going to do the and I'm going to do this raw. But um, a listener sent this to me. Uh, Fox News. This is Fox News, and um, they 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 did what we did, which was the right thing to do. Played the statement of President Trump, that perfect statement on his position on Roe v. Wade and abortion, right? And uh, then apparently they they said that Donald Trump said something that was not true in that perfect statement. So let me play this. I've not listened to this. A listener sent this to me. This is Fox right after the president's abortion statement this morning. Versus Wade, the most influential abortion ruling this country has seen in decades. And guys, this announcement is sure to weigh heavy on voters' minds as we get closer to this November's presidential and congressional elections. Guys. Thanks. Yeah, it's going to motivate people to come out uh, yeah. either way, because you know it's going to be if it's on the ballot in that state. And it's putting more pressure now on the local officials, governors of each state. Well, I think it, he does two things in this video that I think is important. He puts a red line in the sand for the Republicans, so now they can run on the. They're, they're not. There's from the perspective of the president, there shouldn't be any legislation when it comes to this. The second thing that he does, and I think it's very important, because Gretchen Whitmer couldn't even answer the question last week when she was on another program about. When should abortion be illegal? And the president said at nine months, the baby is a baby. And there are some Democrats that are still in favor of abortion at that point. When the so baby feels pain should be the cutoff. Pain. That's what a lot of people think. Uh, so he's got to he's walk a fine line. Do you alienate the pro-life crowd in coming out and saying that? I don't think so. What you would do is a bigger risk would say 15 weeks. Remember Lindsey Graham wrote in 15 weeks? Maybe... Okay, then they go on, because I'm reading the transcript of the clip. I don't want to play the whole thing. But they go on to say that uh, President Trump, I'll, I'll, fast, I'll try to fast forward and play it. Before, I don't know if I'll be able to before the end. I'll play it tomorrow, where they said that it's untrue that Democrats support abortion after birth. That is not, uh, he is right on the money. They don't talk about it so much anymore. But you remember, Steve, that, that was the partial birth abortions, remember? And and dem and leading Democrats still support partial birth abortions. I don't have the timestamp when he gets into that clip, and I can't play the whole thing because you know. But the Democrat, don't let anyone tell you today that Democrats do not support partial birth abortions. And what they did by that is they had some um, legal definition that um, a baby wasn't a baby until a certain percentage of it left the mother's womb, remember? So they would bring out, they would partially bring the baby out of the woman and perform the abortion or commit it, I should say. But if it's, you know, not all the way out, but a certain, per, a baby didn't have rights until it was like either a certain percentage out of the womb. And Democrats not only supported that, they vocally supported it. So don't let anyone tell you today that, uh, uh, President Trump is inaccurate about late-term abortions or partial birth abortions. He is. Democrats don't talk about it as openly so much anymore because it's, it's lost its popularity. But uh, a lot of those Democrats that were supporting late-term and partial birth abortions are still running around there. Uh, so don't, don't believe anyone who tells you that he was inaccurate with that. And I'll, and I'll tell you this, you know, um, when when you look at the rape and incest exceptions, which I I don't support that by the way, um, I don't I you know because it, it it's still a baby, regardless of how it was conceived, right? You know, exactly. Um, but it's up to the states, and when this you know when this happens, some states will allow that exception and some will not. Okay, and that's that's the way we're going to have to live with it. But with all that being said. You know, um, all of these issues don't matter at all if Trump's not reelected in November, right? So what, what's, it, I, I don't think abortion should be on any ballots this time. Things are too important. The, the reason abortion is on the ballot, like they're putting, it's gonna, it's there, yeah. And here, they use it to try to rally up liberals to vote. In Florida, there's two things on the ballot that just tick me off. The abortion issue and legalization of recreational marijuana are also on the ballot here in Florida in November. Recreational marijuana. I mean, come on. You know, it's, it's obvious why they're doing these things. Um, 
But abortion is one we really should stay away from right now because we're going to lose the country if we lose this election. Let's just stay away from it. Um, I, my belief is, I could be wrong about this, you may disagree, but I believe the reason that abortion is front and center with conservatives like this is because of Fox News. Fox News is obsessed. All they do is talk about suburban women, whoever the hell they are, and abortion. And the reason they do that is because obviously the women over on Fox News are obsessed with abortion for some reason. It makes me wonder why, you know, how many of them have had them. It's their best, it's their last desperate hope. If it weren't for Fox News, abortion wouldn't be an issue this time around. Oh, yeah. I think it's, more, I think it's organized beyond uh, Fox News. No, no one talks about abortion more than Fox. You think, well, well that, may, that may be, but you think that discussion of abortion would go away at Fox Center? It wouldn't be so mainstream. Yeah, I do. Because when Roe v. Wade got overturned, there was hardly a pro there wasn't a single protest. I, you know, I was in shock when I always thought that when Roe v. Wade, if it were ever overturned, that those Handmaid Tales ladies would be in the streets of America with all the lesbian activists. And it didn't happen because it wasn't that big of a deal to the left overturning Roe v. Wade. Not nearly as much as you thought. And Fox or Trump haters, they've got women over there that obviously are obsessed with the issue. And when some, when you have a woman that's so, when you have women that are that obsessed with the issues, that means they probably had one. Okay, and and I think Fox News is responsible for Trump making that statement today. I think they drove him into doing it. I don't think people have realized that, but uh, no one talks about abortion more than Fox. It's always about suburban women which is some old-fashioned thing from the 70s and 80s that's not even relevant in 2024. Now, listen, we're out of time for today, but we will be back tomorrow. And, uh, oh, man, I didn't even get to half my show prep today. But uh, I'm sure we'll have more, though. I'll, I'll never get to it because we'll have more tomorrow because it's going to be a big day today as well. And um, I'm not, I'm not going to watch the eclipse. We're not even going to get the eclipse here, Steve. It's going to be a partial eclipse. So, you know, nothing to see. Like a cloud, not much. I'm not excited about the eclipse. I must. If we got a total eclipse, I'd be. I might go outside and watch it, but I'm not going to go outside for a quarter eclipse, half eclipse, whatever it is. I, I don't know. All right, guys. Thanks for tuning in today. My name is Brian Craig. This is the Steve Kane Show. Of course, Steve Kane has been here as well. We'll see you tomorrow morning at 6 a.m. WSFF 104.3 HD3. All right, guys. I got to run. Thanks for watching. If you're new, subscribe. Those of you that are already uh, subbed, make sure you like the video, okay? I'll see you later. Take care, guys.